Let's get started. Now let's get it all in perspective. We did it like that and now we do it like this. Do not attempt to adjust your down. I'm transmitting live. Yo, let's get down to business. Now let's get it all in perspective. We did it like that and now we do it like this. All right. For the underground world, every street and world. You may learn something. You are now listening to the Joe Rogan Experience Experience with Chico, Simon, Kamar, and your host, Matt Floyd. Welcome to the Joe Rogan Experience Experience. My name is Matt Floyd, joined as always by Kamar. Welcome to the party. And Simon. Greetings and salutations. What we do here is very simple. The three of us have listened to every episode of the Joe Rogan Experience this week. We're going to rate each episode as well as the week on a scale of one to five Jamie Vernon's. But then I'm going to talk about each guest, the talking points, give our opinions, this, that, and the next. But first, Kamar, do we have any new patrons? Merry Christmas. Happy Boxing Day. Uh, we sure do. Uh, big shout out to King Spatula. Shout out, Spatula. <clears throat> Thank you, Spatula, on our quest. Uh, that just won? Falling very short. Very short. I'm very disappointed right what, now. Uh, well, you didn't put a time limit on it. Yeah, he said to the end. It was, it was, it was just the end of the year. Yeah. Like, what, uh, where are we at? I think that's five. We had four last week. Yes. Dig deep, guys. So we need f- we need five more at least just to get if one. Only Cyber Pearson. could afford a couple yikes. more extra accounts. Yikes, yikes. No, I didn't do that because I thought, you know, five came in right away. Oh, we'd have yeah. no problem getting like, you all pierced Hit up. that subscribe button. Join the Patreon. But when you only have five listeners, five dedicated listeners, and they all donate, I mean, what are you going to do? They're hamstrung. It's a tight time of year. I understand Christmas and all that, but I just want to get pierced. <laughs> That's the weirdest comment ever. Kamar, how was uh, your week in the big smoke? It was too much. I'm glad I came back. But there's one highlight on... Um, well, no, it's just like the uh, the headliner was cool, and there's no one saying we shouldn't go out after the show or anything. Does that make sense? It's not like we have to be at a job in the morning or something. Our job is it's the same job the next night, so... I think we hung out a bit too much, but... Um, you know what you should do? You should go hang out at a Home Depot as like a day laborer for painting. <laughs> yeah, that would be ambitious. Um, but on uh, on Thursday night, a woman came up to me after the show and was like, you're really funny. I was like, yeah, I know, of course. Uh, you've never been to Ottawa, I suppose. And she was like, no, my son, he talks about you all the time. He thinks you're hilarious. And I was like, okay, lady, this is a bit thick. <laughs> I like compliments more than anyone. And then the kid comes up and is like, oh, dude, so stoked. And what happened was last time I was there, he was in the audience and I made fun of him for looking so young. He still looked like he was fucking 17, but, and everyone else, he said, made fun of him and it just, it changed his life. And she was like, he talks about you all the time. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah. So if you're listening, Simon, uh, pleasure to meet you. I'm sorry. I'm going to disappoint you. Is he is he a listener of the podcast? No, I told I told him if, if you like me that much, you should listen to the podcast. So, oh, there we go. Maybe he's he subbed in. Weird. Simon, it you was, donate was, five dollars. Yeah, come on, Pierce. It was super weird. Yeah, uh, and uh, the highlight because the next night I learned an important lesson. I was outside a show, and these three guys were like drinking sake and smoking joints. I don't know. They're there in twenties, whatever. Like really tuning it up. Yeah. And uh, then they started talking to me, which you know, someone's really tuned up when there's, hey, buddy, nice jacket. Or just, just, just. And I didn't want to say too much. It turns out they were going on the show. They were talking about heckling. They were talking about what's going to happen. And I was like, crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hope you have a good time. And they ended up sitting in the front row. So when I got up there, they were like, hey, is that guy? I was like, shut the fuck up, guys. Like, it was just, you don't want to uh, meet the people. It, <laughs> you don't want to. This guy's fucking before royalty the show. now. The, yeah, yeah. Before the show. civilians. Yeah. Civvies before the show. Uh-uh. No boy. Bueno. Listen to Tom Segura over here. Um, and Young and uh, Eglinton was still under construction. Yeah. And it was just so deflating. Like, of all the things, you just want to see some sort of progress. And it was the worst I'd ever seen it. Yeah, it's terrible. But, uh, yeah, Toronto still is. It's, it's the best city. And I just, uh, it was a whirlwind tour. Thank you, everyone who came out of the shows. It was great to see you out there. Well, we're proud of you, pal. Simon, how was your week? Um, <clears throat> my week was fine, Matt. My shoulder seems to be on the mend on its own, which is comforting. You went to your GP, though? I did, yeah. She sent me to get some tests that I haven't gotten yet. But 
You know, it's funny. Simon has two volumes, like very monotone. I was, my week was fine. Or he has worked up about aliens, well, which is like get a level. Worked okay, up in here a we second. go. That, this is the calm. Gonna, um, so I was watching fucking Walking Dead this morning at six in the morning because my sleep schedule is horrible. How deep are you? And oh, I'm so far now, like season seven or something. They're there's, right. There's in not the, even zombies left. They're in anymore, the right? Negan Wars right now. I never so. made it that far. Anyways, um, the stupid deer walked by again. So I went out onto the porch and I slammed the door and it looked at me in like the weirdest way, but facing towards me. Okay. I'm like looking directly down and then the head turns all the way around. So its head is now with oh, its wants butt. to fuck. It, no, it's like poltergeist shit. Anyways, they, they're just such assholes. You Leave know the what I'm behind. saying? So I need some advice. Yeah. I want to deer incentivize. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's good. Deer incentivize? Um, my property to try and keep them off. And I want to like, listen, I'm not an asshole, like a sadist. I don't want to like injure the deer, but I want to like... They can't just look at me with abandon, you know what I mean? There's there's a pecking order here, and I have to establish that pecking order. So if anybody out there has a suggestion as to how I can... Fence is too much work? Uh, most people are going to write in and say a gun. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to shoot the deer. Okay, well, maybe looks BB like you're shit out of luck. Even that seems a little harsh, you know what I mean? Even for a penny, even for a pound. Yeah. I thought sh- you were going to cut its head off and put it on a pike. No, no. I want I want I want when they look at me to run away. That yeah. should be the regular. You got to scream like Julia happens. Roberts, man. What, what? They don't I yell at them. I like I it's and it's early in the morning, so I don't want to create too big a th- I want to I want to shoot the adult with like a slingshot, let's say. Mm-hmm. And I want it to say to its baby, oh. This guy means business. Don't go around there. What, any what about an air, you know? air home? I thought about that, but again, six o'clock in the morning, I'm going to like. Dude, set up a DJ stand. People, <laughs> you know? That's what I the thinking. reason the fences don't work, Kamar, is because it's an open river line, you know? So they have like free reign to. They're real fucks. And I'm not happy about it. Interdimensional beings. Deer? Would you rather deal with deer or homeless people on Somerset? Well, it's very similar. Is it? Well, they walk around with abandon. They don't give a fuck. You yell at them. They don't run away. It's true. They carry fucking ticks. Lose your teeth. They carry ticks, both of them. (laughs) Um, So that, that was the annoying part of my week. And then... Uh, not really annoying, but kind of disappointing. I found out that, um, and I think I believe this, uh-huh. that, you know, the famous Yeti footprint picture? No. I think you do. I Okay. It's, Don't you love when someone asks you a question, you give them an honest answer? Well, no, no, no. I, I just, like, you're trying to be He's an asshole. He's got to establish the think, truth. No, I'm not trying to be an forward. asshole. I genuinely don't. That's like a famous... Yeti footprint. Okay. It was it's a weird one. It like well it's not what sorry. I was that's not what I thought I was gonna see. Anyways, I, I think it is a hoax. Oh, that must when be devastating. When the guy explains the footprint, he's like, Look, it's like a water bottle imprinted into the ground with the Sherpa's bare foot halfway, and then another and I'm like, Oh, that really does. And then cause it's not a very big footprint either. The famous shot is of like an ice pick head. <laughs> and yeah, when you look scale. at the size of it's like just the size of a normal human footprint. Gotcha. The whole thing just anyway, you know. Don't always believe what you see. So that stinks a big man. kinda, you know. But wow, Simon admitting that well, I mean that you weren't listen, just I, I want it to You be, weren't hung up on Yeti for just that footprint, were you? Like you still believe? No, yeah, I still believe yeah. there's a there's Yetis. There's yeah. tons of um So it changes nothing for you. But this was like the equivalent to the Patterson Gimlin for <laughs> um, mm, for Yeti people. for Yeti people, gotcha. but it's just yeah, no good, man. No good. And know uh, that's pretty much my week. How was your week, Matt? My week was fine. Do you want to go over the guest list, Kamar, so we can uh, do what we do here? Let's get busy as we wind down the year. I think it came in with a bang of a week. We start off with 
276 as a Raskin and Tristan Harris. Not 276. 2076. There we go. I think that's how you say that. 2076. As we're almost at the end. Oh, it will be in the threes soon. And then we had 2077 in a raccoon coat, Tim Dillon. And we also had a MMA show, but we don't cover that with Bo Nickel. Nickel. It's with a A. Nickel. Nickel. What's that shit just spoken? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I give the week a four. That's a big rating, Matt. It was a really good week. It's a big rating. Might even be four and a half. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a four and a half. I could, I, I could just slam down what I want to say. But. You want to say five? Yeah, you can say five. I it's was five. leaning. Was five. I was leaning towards five. five. It should be a four. I'll give it a four and a half. Four and a half for sure. I'll give it a four. Wow. In comparison of the breadth of the work of the year, I'll give it a four. Listen to Chat solid, GPT over here. Solid four. Yeah, I can't believe you guys said there's no questions. Well, you don't oh, realize no, that's how... coming for sure. Oh, we'll do that in the post, Joe. No, no, it's coming in a second. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> do you want to? Uh, which one are we going to rate it? Rate it. Oh, we both rate it. What's who are we four, starting with? Yeah, four yeah. Point four point five. And four point five. five. Yeah. Obviously, a good week on uh, Rogan, but no. Let's talk about uh, Chat GPT. T. Kamar. Well, uh, then we'll start with Tim Dillon and then finish with the. Uh, so the the first thing, the first one, the first set of notes you sent me, those were song GPT. One hundred percent authentic. One hundred percent authentic. From the cloth. I called it. And then how do you? What's the prompt? I, I that took you I use? took notes for the parks. I mean, they were they were so long because it was whatever five hours, and I and I fed them into Chat GPT. But I said I said. Take these notes and condense them to 20 interesting talking points. And then I didn't even look at it. I just cut paste whatever it did. And it went to 75. Now, what I should have done is said, as I am a six-year-old. And it would have come out, I think. And you would not <laughs> yeah, have known that's anything. true. We wouldn't have known. So yeah. I, I was one prompt away. But it's I, true. But I also, because oh. just whatever... Rocket out Toronto. I thought I would. I thought it was Sunday when I sent them. Yeah, and I might have sent them on Friday. Like I was all in a panic, and you didn't look at them. If, had you looked at him, said, "What is this?" Is it? Oh, that that was a joke. Note. Here's the notes. Oh no, I just looked at like. Oh, he sent me the notes. Great. I should have sent them in note thing. You pointed that out. That was- the change in tone was just hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like it was, it was fucking crazy. comical. And the best is that it took us like two or three to be like. Wait a minute. What's yes. going on here? Yeah. Like he I didn't read, even notice at first. Yeah, he read the first one and we both just kind of breezed over it. And the second one, I, I was like, something kind of stinks here. And then by the third one, I was like, hold on, hold on. I was like, this vocabulary is like <laughs> well, dense. I was listening, going along with my notes, <laughs> just seeing which I would scroll over. And when he first read the first one, like the absurdity of existence. <laughs> yeah, I like, Did I fucking say that? No, and then I realized, oh, I sent him the chat GPT notes. See, Sim- uh, Kamar, the funny thing is like Simon and I took your notes. I fed them into chat GPT. We just didn't prompt it correctly. Yeah, I, you gotta, it's all about the prompt. It is because what we said, Simon, was just make it more concise. Yeah, that's no good. No, we, no. we had to. You have to be concise with what you want to Write these notes like you were... A Harvard grad, a PhD. A 10-year-old. That, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I almost got away with it by that much. Yeah, uh, almost. Anyways, almost. good good one. Good All one. right, Timmy okay. Dillon. Yeah, it was amazing. We're doing Tim Dillon first? Yeah. Okay. And then we'll talk about the rest of the yeah, you guys' then, episode of the yeah. post show. So you guys know me, big uh, collector of things. 2077 Tim Dillon. Yeah, big collector of things. Yeah. yeah ashtrays. I, many different things. Yeah. But I have. How many ashtrays do you have? Oh, a lot of ashtrays. But I was like, that was for a purpose. You know what I mean? What was the purpose? Um, For the store. Oh, I got you. Yeah. It's like. But you have way more ashtrays than what's at the store. No, everything's at the store. Thanks, Mary. Looks like Marcus Christmas Christmas slide those off. The, thank what, you. What are those? I don't know. Edibles? Keep it away from Chico, though. No, there's no. Uh, there's no Dog killer. There. That looks good. Um, He's going to eat it on air. Ash, yeah, I mean, I don't know why Mary. Was, they but, yeah. ordered pizza. We can do whatever the fuck we want. It, Come on. Okay. We are, he, like, bro- he broke the rules. Um, you collect well, lots of things. Oh, collect lots of things. Thank you. Have a little bit of taxidermy. Yeah. Um, some of the taxidermy I had were these crazy albino raccoons, I thought. Okay. It turns Raccoon out dogs. that these must be 
European raccoons. Oh, they, interesting. They were like these, like, I thought they were, I called them ghost raccoons. Mm -hmm. All kind of blonde, and they look like uh, they'd be very prized by, like, native people. Well, it's like New York. There's no uh, black squirrels. Like, I think most of the states doesn't have black squirrels. Is but that, I know for is sure. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. New York, like, you, you, there, it's all gray squirrels. So it's very interesting. Like, I remember my dad was dating this woman from New York, and she came and she was like, What the fuck? Is that squirrel black? And we were like, Yeah, like all of them, or most of them are. And then I moved to New York, and I was like, Holy fuck, I have not seen a black fucking squirrel. It's very interesting. That is weird. Yeah. Because um, I told you when I was in Amsterdam, and all the people were gathered at the zoo. Mm -hmm. They were all gathered around this thing and they were looking at raccoons. But That's now that so doesn't make any sense. Cause where did he say these raccoons were from? Finland or something. I can't oh, remember. I guess further up. Anyways, they don't have raccoons in uh, Amsterdam. I, I honestly would, if it were socially acceptable, I would have a raccoon as a pet. They're pretty fun. Yeah. They're pretty fun. They just seem chill. Well, they can be real dicks. Well, what animal? But can? if you raised it from a pup, like yeah, I, I think imagine, it, yeah. I'm not saying go grab one by the scruff and bring it into your their home. Their little hands are so human like. It's a very weird. Um, yeah. We've talked about it many times. The one that steals the fucking food. Oh, yeah. That's it's like one of my favorite videos on the internet. But that's like a ratty little raccoon, man. Just the way he like picks it up with his hands and walks away. Sorry, Kamar, go on. Um, but yeah, the raccoon jacket was it, that whole bit was fucking hilarious. He's just living his best life, this Tim Dillon. Like, he looked like a preppy, um, glebe kid who's yeah. got his mother's jacket at a party smoking weed. Oh, what just you know that that look like, yeah, it's not right, but it's wrong. Um, <laughs> we, we have no issue against fur coats. We like, I'm speaking of uh, the series, I know it's wrong. Because as Joe stressed, it was uh, it's it's just leather without the fur. We have a, something with people going out to kill that thing just so I can have this coat. I think uh, I mean listen. I think maybe the problem with some is like a chinchilla small, and to have a chinchilla coat, you have to kill like a bunch of them, and to do it specifically for a coat, I think that's maybe like if you were like I have a deer coat. I totally agree, which I might have to do to prove to these motherfuckers <laughs> there you that go. they can't fuck with me. <clears throat> but do you get the difference, Kamar? Like, if Joe was like, I'm wearing a pelt from something that I killed, like, I used the whole animal. I don't think anyone has a problem it, with that. It takes a lot of... Um, but I wear a Canada goose, so who the fuck am I? is what you'd want. If well, you that's coyote. Yeah, I know. But my, my point is, I, I like Kamar saying, I don't have an issue with it. I have a coat where they specifically cull coyotes. Yeah or their fur to make my coat warm. So there yeah. you go. You're a real prick. Yeah, I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. One of the things I remember when I went many, many moons ago to uh, Kansas City to watch the Lions play. Yeah. Is you could go out. When was that? Many moons ago. Like 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Sorry. And um, and you could you could stand like out of the back. Like it wasn't a stay there stadium. You could see all the players walking like from the, the car area into the stadium all the football players were wearing fur jackets. Yeah. I just remember, like, it was just so, like, don't you want your perception to be, they didn't, they wanted to look as rich and just. Remember when I met Ty It's a real flaunt thing, sorry, to do the fur jacket. Yeah. Remember when I met Tyrese and I thought it was Terrell Owens? Yeah. Um, he was wearing a fucking sable coat. Yeah, just add to, add to the Might have been chinchilla, this. actually. It was Either gray. way, both of those are like $50,000 fucking Yeah, coats. no, but I, I totally hear what Matt's saying. You're killing so many animals to make this one coat is way different than like, you know, killing a bear and wearing him. Yeah, and like leather. Bear, like, bear, a bear fur coat would be cool. Well, any animal that like it doesn't take 17 of them to... Like leather, this coat leather's from you. a cow, right? Yeah. Like we kill cows on mass for well, meat. That's what Joe said. It's crazy that you would have a problem with any fur, considering how much leather is out there. Well, like, again, I think it's the fact that like if you're already going to kill all these cows, you might as well use all of it. So the leather is like a byproduct of the meat. Whereas again, if you're just specifically like, let's go out and kill 400 chinchillas for this jacket. I, I highly doubt that's the case. I don't know what the case is. I, like I said, they use I don't care. The, like pelt from the meat uh, cows. I'm sure they just have other cows that are leather, like leather cows. cows. You think? Hmm. I would assume so. I would assume because a people penguin shit, coat would you know? be no, really there's nice. a lot of leather out there. A penguin coat? 
Well, probably very warm. Uh, the bird Penguin coat really never coat. caught on. Well, a water bird, that's very interesting. Yeah. It's like that uh, seal, sailor's, seal, seal like sailor's wool. Similar seal, realm. Seal, whale. Which, which they do. Whale coats. I, I wonder if they... Um, well, nice whales. Whale coat. Whales. Have different. you seen my beluga coat? <laughs> oh, that's a rain. Coat. <laughs> that's <laughs> whale, a rain. Coat. Whale skin. The birds. It looks like skin, but it's feathers. That's yeah, yeah, the like difference. yeah. Is that right? Yeah, uh, penguins. Are, it's like that thick. The feathers and very dense. Wouldn't it be cool if we found out that whales were actually um, feathered. I love how you say "found out" were, like we haven't been killing whales on <laughs> mass. Like nobody bothered to look yeah. close. Uh, Mary did a great job. I don't know what those things are, but have the other ones. You eat those ones. <laughs> oh, <selfless. laughs> Absolutely selfless. <laughs> this guy's hilarious. Um, they were talking about... Uh, yeah, sorry. I did that all wrong. Those stink. <laughs> yeah, that's there. Try that's, the toffee. That's the play, yeah. The toffee with the almonds. That looks more she, your did speed. Did she up the salt? <laughs> um, they were talking about going to space and space travel and it really is like got to be a glaring thing that we can't get there with fossil fuels. Like the fact that they, they, this is the only way we can go is is not it's untenable. Yeah, it really feels like they're just kind of this idea of space travel to Mars is like um, funding another war. It, it, it's just like it's hitting never, your head against the wall. Yeah, I, I'm, exactly. I'm sure you're making some sort of progress, but this can't, it can't be the way. It would seem to me that you have w a way better chance of um, building cities under the ocean than mm. you do of... The um, energy it takes to get out off the planet. Here's the thing about under the ocean. I was thinking about this. Okay, Matt? Mm -hmm. We think about it like, let's say you, you were planning on building a society underwater. Yeah. And you want to start with like a, a neighborhood. Let, let's just say that, you know, that's how it starts. Okay. We always assume like you're going to have to go down there and um, have all this equipment to build houses for people to live in, but you have to do it all underwater. So it's insane. Right, like to build. I've never thought about building underwater. It, it would so. be very difficult, I imagine. Anyways, maybe you build giant bubbles, and then once you've done that, the rest is well, you have, just like building. You on have land, access you know? to materials far easier than you have on. I mean, I guess the idea is you build the ship, the lands on the planet that can access the materials to build more stuff out of. Like what we know. You're to, talking about on Mars now, or wherever. There's nothing on Mars for you to access to build more shit. Well, come on, you if, know what I'm saying? There's no steel up there, and no, but actually, we, I don't know that. Maybe there is. We, they will be able to. I mean, the next episode obviously is going to lead into this, but not even they. It will figure out how to make steel out of uh, what about 3D printing? Sigrid ashtray. 3D exactly. printing, good one, Matt. But you still have to get a 3D printer up there to, unless they... It's just going to well, take a little while. That's not hard. I think it's easier to build in space in defense of your point. In, in underwater, but I don't... The building underwater is just like to preserve... You just... But you, you're, you missed the big picture here. You're just building giant bubbles. And then yeah. inside those bubbles, everything operates the same way it does on. But you have no sunlight, no. So you don't have to build all these like weird underwater things that aren't going to be comfortable. It's going to be just like topside, except it's going to be underwater. <laughs> you know what survives when there's like a catastrophe? Um, the tardigrades. The whales. The whales. Anything that lives under the water. 70% of the planet. No, sh no, no, no. It's sharks. Sh whales didn't survive. Sharks did. Sharks. Whales are us, remember? The sharks have been around. Maybe. The whales might be wolves. Remember that? Yeah, okay, sure. But the point is, we're all mammals. So, like, the sharks, it's... Sharks were here. Remember we did this like a couple weeks ago? Like, the rings well, of Saturn yeah. hadn't appeared yet before. They found, like, an octopus um, fossil that goes back to like way before anything yeah. which is weird to think about this is tim dylan we're talking about right now yeah mm -hmm. oh, this okay. is a great episode yeah sorry go ahead Come on. then joe stated that he feels 
point for now, the Egyptians was the most advanced civilization. With iteration or whatnot. I don't you know. have a hard enough time already. I don't think you should be fucking putting Chewing things into on your toffee. mouth. Ridiculous. Um, yeah, they probably were. But again, we don't like, you know, Simon's mentioned this before. Like, if we dig deep enough, we might find that there's some civilization that outdates them by 100,000 years. I think that's probably, and I'm not being facetious, I think that's probably a pretty safe bet. It, The same way um, global warming is just a giant cycle of the earth, so is Humans people and being here. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. I was reading this thing the other day. Apparently, if our civilization ended tomorrow, um, like it would take, like the only thing that would be left after 65,000 years is uh, bronze statues, which we have a lot of. So like if, 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 if we were exterminated and everything ended in 65,000 years, even if everything was covered in dirt, you would find bronze statues of like Werner von Braun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Christopher Columbus, that sort of thing. That's crazy to think about. And I think that our civilization, um, the way we've come te technologically, yeah, all our storage is done on um, media, cloud, imaginary kind of space. Yeah, it will never be found. Like it's almost like other civil or they'll find like um, our relics of the Egyptians. DVDs and think that seem was valuable less. all of a sudden. Because you will not, there'll be nothing left. Like you said, there'll be statues and nothing. No, burn, books burn. Uh, you know what I mean? Stone survives. How much shit do we write on stone anymore? Yeah. All that being said, we are, have one foot in, one foot out of the next civilization, which is digital. Yep. Which we're, we're too old to like, we think uh, we see this thing coming and... It's going to be totally different, but it's just, it's happening as we speak. Like from when we started this podcast to now, I don't something's changed in the. I don't think we're too old. I think we're the most important generation ever because we're a foot in both. In both, we are able to know what it was like before, before the AI. If you don't even know, then you assume it's they always may been like value this. mining our experience. Before they put us out on the island. <laughs> there was a tweet I saw the other day where someone was like, I was trying to explain to a young person that I used to order CDs in the mail and I'd pay a penny for like a hundred CDs. Columbia. Yeah. And they were like, what did they say? They were like, I don't know what they were more confused about. The CDs, the mail or the penny. Well, and listen, I was like, holy fuck, that I'm is crazy. I'm still confused by the penny. None of that ever made any sense to me. How were they just giving you so many CDs for a penny? Because it was like some... I'm sure it's the same thing. They were selling your address to 20 other companies to send you coupons or something else. That's probably else. true, yeah. It's probably it, true. It, 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 our manipulation is a story old as time. Oh, thank you, Nostradamus. Um, world leaders, body doubles. That's an interesting thing. Well, we know there's eight exist. Putins or whatever. They don't even need surgery. You can do it with makeup. And that's one thing we don't know. Well, so, especially a guy like Putin is secretive. Like Putin, Biden, Jamie Foxx. Anytime you've ever Jamie seen Fox. Biden make sense, it's been a body double. <laughs> Jamie Foxx, you're fucking hilarious. We do not know what our eyes are seeing. No, that's... And, and that decreases every day that we're alive. Um, <laughs> this guy, eh? <laughs> don't, you, don't you think the Caitlyn Jenner was at my Christmas party? Because uh, there's a little more... Um, Time. Deconstruction. Caitlyn Jenner was at whose Christmas Tim party? Tim Dillon's Christmas party. Huh. I mean, that makes sense. He's or, or he was just going over the top. This is the life I'm living. This is the life I'm living. You think Caitlyn Jenner is hanging out with Tim Dillon? Or Tim Dillon's a liar. Or, or he was, it was one of his gags. No, I believe it. It sounds about right. Which is just a wild, because you've got to fill in. If Tim was there and Caitlyn was there, everyone in between. It just, it paints a wild picture of. Who's hanging out with who? I guess it didn't have as much impact on you guys. I don't remember him saying it. I don't remember him saying it yeah. either. When Are you, you said sure it, you I didn't was... dream that. No, he was talking about Caitlyn no. Jenner at his Christmas party. How she's a good gal and she's fun to have around. Oh, oh, you know what? I do remember this. Yes, sorry. 
I just, you're right. It didn't hit me at the time. I, well, you know what? Kamar, famous people, when they're like, yeah, I rubbed elbows with another famous person, I don't find it like that shocking. Uh, did you just invite Caitlyn to your party? And did he mean his Christmas party or a Christmas party he went to? I assume Caitlyn Jenner just shows up at random Christmas parties of famous people. Yeah, these are all questions I would ask you. I'm here, but yeah, you, I guess. If you had yeah, a Christmas true. party. Yeah, but Joe Caitlyn knows Jenner the answers. No, no, no. But Joe knows the answers. <laughs> Joe's like, yeah, I've been at 10 Christmas parties this month. Caitlyn Jenner was at all of them. You know what I mean? I'm like, here, Timmy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, they've gone to you already. Um, oh, my God. That's funny. After, like, do you, I remember. Um, it was shortly after the Ukraine war, there was some guy who was on who's like, Ukraine got this. It's just the soft soil. I was just there. Um, yeah, yeah. And and that was Joe's idea. And now two years later, Tim Dillon is explaining the same war to Joe and him going, oh, my goodness. I mean, even after Dave Smith's done it twice, it's just a weird, like, I don't know if Joe doesn't retain anything. <laughs> <laughs> How he could have Tim Dillon break down. You're what talking we, about the Donbass and the, um, the, the, the and, it's, and it's Tim Dillon doing it. And then I think Joe Mayev says, "I'm like, have you heard Dave Smith talk about it?" And I, I heard him on here, so I'm actually repeating back to you what we already know. Um, yeah, I don't know if Joe doesn't retain um, anything. The, the, a big tell now is uh, doing shit for democracy or the children. Yes, and, I said that a couple and, weeks and ago. I, and I lap the planet into it, but that's uh, if, if that's your intention, then you're fucking us. <clears throat> Hardcore. Because, like, that's what they were saying. If we don't uh, fight this war in Ukraine, he's coming for all of us. With straight faces, and obviously that's never going to happen. Listen, if he can't comfortably win a war on his own border in the Ukraine, then how's or, he going to come over here? Or if he has comfortably won it. And they're just saying, I mean, this is what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think they had elections in the places where he was taking over. So, um, but we have no idea of like universal truths because of the level of censorship in foreign news. Like, you have no idea what it is to watch a night of Dutch news for a week or Chinese news or whatever, just with. So, what I, I mean, I think that'd be a good exercise. And I wonder if there's powers that be that keep that from. Because you can search around on YouTube and find Al Jazeera and like India news and Taiwan news, but parsing it all together and see which which same stories are lies, like it's easier here if like you look at MSNBC or Fox. Yeah, you can see the filters that are put on here. But you have no idea of what the cultural background of people watching is, which is probably scary. Uh, the intellectuals are just lying now. I don't know. I think that's a pretty broad statement. Maybe they're they're lying based on lies that they've accepted as truths that with a bit of parsing is not true. Well, no, what I'm saying is like, you know, the, like the Weinsteins are intellectuals, are they not? Joe has them on all the time to talk and it's not like they're... Mm, yes. Am I wrong there? Well, uh, I understand uh, the in, statement. Uh, more of the intellectuals that are being uplifted are lying because he's okay. telling the truth and he's being... Yeah. Because I will always remember him as a first person or might even Peterson... But to mention ChatGPT, in passing, this thing coming down the pike is going to blow everyone's mind. But it, it it didn't even know that much about it at that time. You know what's funny? I asked ChatGPT the other day because I, I had a trivia lightning round where I was like, I, I'm going to do anyone who's been nominated for best picture since, or sorry, anyone who's been nominated for best actor since 2010. I didn't want to copy paste it all from Wikipedia because it was a nightmare. So I was like, oh, I'll just get ChatGPT. This is like perfect for ChatGPT. So I said, hey, can you give me all the nominees for best actor at the Oscars from 2010 until present day? And it said, uh, that's a pretty exhaustive list. I'll give you all the winners from the last 10 years. I was like, what? I was like, dude, are you fucking joking? I have the photo. I'll read you the <laughs> response. Dude, bitch, this is your job. That's what I said. I would, I would just reach over and unplugged it. Oh, dude, I could not believe it. Are you it. paying for it? Uh, is that free chat? GPT? No, that's free. But who gives a shit? Listen, this is its response. This is my... That, that's the problem. This is me. Can you tell me all the nominees for Best Actor at the Oscars from 2010 until present date? This is chat GPT. 
I can't provide an exhaustive list of nominees, but I can share some notable winners from the best Oscar category during that period. That motherfucker brushed you off. Dude, I couldn't. I was or like, what, this what, is he's nuts. like, I'm kind of busy right now, but if you check back with me later, well, I might be able to help you out. Dude, when he said exhaustive list, I was like, it's yeah, that's why I'm getting you, know? you to do it. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> what if? Oh my God. Why do you have sassy Chad GVD? <laughs> what the what fuck? if Chad did the calculations and figured out it would take you three days? To read through the exhaustive list. It wouldn't. It's oh. five a year. I'm, I'm, That's I'm, I'm, 50. I'm just to throw well, then he should have said that. I'm trying to save you time. <laughs> also, how is 50 an exhaustive list for a computer? Not I'm a little preoccupied. Check back with me later. Yeah. Do it's, I? Do, do you really need 50? It felt like the ending <laughs> of 25. Dude, it felt like Seriously. the, <laughs> it felt like the ending of, with you. felt like the ending of her. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how bad do you need fifty? <laughs> Is it for your grandma? That's a, a throw over. Um, space tour, a throw over. Yeah, um, <laughs> space, kind of industry that's legend. That's when you say something that nobody understands. <laughs> space tour, tourism accidents will be um, accepted because it'll always be rich people. I, I guess there'll be some sort of like charity case they got to go on but for the most part it'll be almost like the um the guys going down to the uh titanic on the other end like when when people when astronauts go to space and someone dies you're just like oh that was their job but that school teacher that's why that was such a mm -hmm. big deal right mm -hmm. because she was just a civilian yeah um the nearest planet is 14 light years away so if we achieve traveling at the speed of light, um, is that that's not true? Did you say the f closest planet or solar system, galaxy? Uh, no, he, he said planet. Saying. Oh, where life could be yeah. sustained. That's a big. Uh, as we assume, because they don't even have a satellite on the other side of the sun to check for the stuff that we can't see. Because, <laughs> anyways, I mean, there's a lot of problems with space and space talk. But even at light speed, that would take 14 years. 28 year return trip moving at the speed of light, which I think is attainable, but it'll be something like we can break down. But even then, hold on. If you're moving at the speed of light for 14 years, by the time you got back, let's say you just landed and turned around right away. That 28 minutes you're talking about by the time you got back to 28 earth, 28 years, but yeah, no, forget the 28 years. By the time you got back to earth, it would be a thousand years in the future. And the technology would be better. Yeah. Or everyone would be gone. Or everybody will be dead. Yeah, yeah. there's one of the two. So, so it's got to be something like that. Um, they have to figure out time travel before they think about going to space. Rats all around the world all of a sudden know something. Yeah. That thing. So that ability to travel yeah. through space or whatever, but not, not actually moving. Time travel, something like that. Wormholes, that seems like the most appropriate. That fits into like the mathematical equations that we believe today. Yeah. Yeah. I well, feel like, uh, sorry. No, go ahead. I, I feel like Joe was having a moment where he realized like, I think that Sam Altman guy was lying to me the whole time because <laughs> <laughs> his bullshit meeting. Because I mean, he was here, we were talking, but he could be um, a clone that Chad has made. We said that when Sam Altman was on. I was like, this guy could be the turret. Because the next two for sure are. <laughs> for sure are. But um, Alex Jones has been right more than like CNN. The one thing that in, he... In retrospective. The one thing that he got wrong was egregious in the way he got wrong and offensive. Hurt people's feelings. But uh, the mainstream media has been way more off than him, which is wild. And I was wondering, because uh, Giuliani just got hit for $148 million by two women. Doesn't matter. He immediately claimed bankruptcy. Oh, of course. They're not getting a dollar. <laughs> where does someone say the damages are $148 million? Like, if you give oh, me $500,000, that would make me... When you find out that... Sorry, just backtracking for a second. When you find out that, like, some of the biggest events of your lifetime have been directly um, narrated out by the government <laughs> it kind of changes your perspective no on what uh no we that would not happen in canada that's all i'm saying someone could sue someone and they'd get but these numbers that they come out the 1.5 billion dollars like that's a 
That's the damage that no, no, no. He Before Giuliani, what were you talking about? Alex Jones. Alex Jones. No, Get, but getting one point five billion dollars no, for what he got wrong I, compared I'm, to what the news has gotten wrong. I'm violent. saying CNN being wrong, like they were wrong about everything. Well, I don't watch CNN, so compared to Alex Jones, yeah, they must have got something right. I was just gonna say, there's no way they've not gotten anything right. There was a hurricane. On yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, past like what are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Were, the hurricane didn't exist. It's hur- all a fucking hurricanes don't exist. It's a made up fucking myth. Because <laughs> giant wind machines. You yeah. know what it's on? There's a guy. Ah, it's coming. Right. Yeah. There's He's green screen, a guy Mark. Green screen. Green screen. Yeah. Yeah. Green screen and a very big fan. Yeah, that's it's it. It's not hard. Yeah, we just cracked the code. Um, the, the danger of metaverses. I think that'll be interesting as people join their um or. Save, the lo- save it for the next episode. Okay. No, no, well, hold on, though. Where... But like, just real quick, it's I, I always find this interesting because it's like, do you think that people, when the telephone was invented, were like, oh, this is blasphemous? Talking no, to someone across the earth? But the telephone was universal. Some people didn't use the telephone. Some people used the telegram. Some people were using fax. It was the only means. So these are all the same thing. But I don't like, know why he threw the fax in there, but okay. It, it doesn't really make sense. I, I, <laughs> have you seen Tetris? <laughs> No, I haven't. The movie? Amazing. Yeah, amazing. It's amazing. It came out so long ago. Yeah. I know, but it didn't get reviews for some reason. It maybe, was it was really some, good. It was really good. I, I think Who I cried. knew that fucking Tetris was like a fucking spy novel? Do, 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 do. You know what it is? It's do, a, do, that dude that do, was in do, Blackbird, do. he has like a real uh, American psycho vibe to him. He's a good actor. He's attractive. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Like he seems like... The part Christian Bale was playing, it seems like that guy is living that. Like, I guarantee you, he has killed a hooker or two. But Tetris is a true story. Yeah, I know. And it's all like, you you wish you knew that was going on at that time. A, a monumental shift from the Soviet Union to becoming what they are now still. A I love how Russia. you say that. Like, seven-year-old me is like, I wish I knew what was going on with Soviet Russia. Uh, just, how it was, just how it was different. Literally, like when it gets down to them, literally, um, they wouldn't accept money for stuff. The country wouldn't. They would want to trade. Well, the money idea. wasn't worth shit, right? Like, well, there's no money here. We're communists. Everyone just get, it was. It, it was. They were really trying to live by that. Anyways, um, part of the American dream, in contrast, is you always get a second act. Trump may be on his third act, but I think uh, Hunter might be on a second act. Oh, they, they have three or four acts in America. I don't think we're as forgiving here. I, I kind of feel for Hunter only because, not that I feel for him, he's a rich fucking daddy's boy. Just that he, I feel like he got caught up. Normally he would have gotten a pass. They would have brushed this under the rug of a president's son who's smoking crack with hookers. Like, I'm sure that's par for the course if you go he's back. He's not the only one. This is what I'm saying. But because of, because of all the mud slinging back and forth between the Trump and the... the he just got caught up and it was like well, the laptop leaving the laptop yeah yeah, yeah. no help, what i'm know? saying is this though simon his shit was so he egregious has to take some responsibility. his shit was so egregious that they were like if we want to go after trump someone has to go down on our side like if they have enough dirt on someone on our side you can't you know what i mean it it looks so corrupt if it's like donald trump did this but it's like well you got this crack smoking fucking president's son who's making deals in the ukraine and doing all sorts of fucking wild shit like the fact that the fact that Colorado actually said Trump can't run is fucking wild. I know it'll get overturned to the appeal. Well, what I heard is it doesn't matter because a uh, Republican hasn't won there in 25 years. So no, it's but like just the- banning him from an election he was never going to win or to run. <clears throat> What's more interesting is four states have decided that Joe Biden's wins the primary. What? Yeah, which they won't cover that news. I think Carolina, New Hampshire. Which Carolina? There's two believe it's north and maybe virginia as well what do you mean they've decided they're supposed to have primaries yeah and, and they're, they're just not doing that but you're telling me that sure. north carolina is a democratic state i have a tough time virginia that. which uh, another virginia tough time. makes it, sense it is but it, you wouldn't think it is anyways that's the other story on the other side is that they're just pushing biden through just like what happened to bernie and hillary but they won't cover that but yeah from what i understand he was never going to win that state so it, it sounds like we got him in some way, if all the other states were to do that, but 
Obviously, they won't. But yeah, it's craziness now. Politics, which, as Simon pointed out last week, is that kids did not care about politics. And then Tim was talking about he had some... Yeah, kids. I grew up a normal life. I didn't care about politics until five how, years how ago. I'm trying to Tim understand Dillon. when I... Uh, He's 35, I think. I'm trying to understand when I understood politics. I still don't understand politics. Well, That's people what they lie want. to say a power. That's what they want? Yeah. Did you see Elon's tweet? Did you see what I retweet? I, re- I posted on my Instagram. Elon tweeted the other day. He was like... Uh, those who seek power are those who should not have it. And so, someone commented, my brother in Christ, you bought the website. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about just like having no fucking, I like. Just so delusional. Like, this is it's what I'm saying. Crazy. It's not, it is not crazy. We are delusional. Like simpletons like us have moments of delusion. I can't, I, I tried to say it uh, two weeks ago, whatever. With George St. Pierre, this guy. a man of leisure. Yeah. Like, you can't imagine what that's like, right? No. To just, next Wednesday, do you want to go here? Well, no, I, yeah, sure. Hey. Like anything you want, any yeah, place I you want to go, yeah. anything you want to do. There's no us. <clears throat> Don't include us. You have you no delusions. simpletons. You have no delusions. Oh, no. sorry. Complicated. No, I, uh, I definitely have delusions, but I'm not out there. Well, I guess I am. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who were we even talking about? When I Who took else? notes, the notes I had, like full thoughts formed. I had places to go from. I quote. <laughs> Don't ever do that again. What was that? That was a transcript from last week's episode where you're banging on my notes. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> could, could you imagine? Because <clears throat> uh, Joe said, you know, if TikTok was out or something, you'd be, even if you're 19, you'd cr- rise to the top and be social media famous he was saying this to tim dylan yeah and i just try to imagine if we our 17 year old selves you know are we're turning 17 last year or something like that what our involvement would i i, I obviously can't even imagine because it's so later on i mean when instagram started it was just like i guess you show photographs i was on instagram early and you can go you back were, and were. mine is very cringeworthy <laughs> agreed you agree that his Instagram was cringeworthy? No, you just like, it was the beginning of, like you said, you're like, what do I do here? Like, what is the what, purpose of this? Like, It just gets put out. Matt did a lot of like, Matt is eating a sandwich. No, I didn't do a lot of that. <laughs> well, that's more, no. that's how Twitter, that's how <laughs> no. Twitter started out. Yeah, that's how Twitter started out. In, an, in another weird thing, like, okay, I just say I'm going for breakfast. You see, it that sucks. is fucking weird. It's super weird. Nobody fucking cares. But apparently everybody cared. Well, I love people complaining about how Twitter's death on Twitter. <laughs> like, yeah, so, yeah. Fuck this place. I'm out of here. I'll be tweeting tomorrow. The same I'll time. see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, this goes into, um, I, I guess, the next week. But in the same turn as trying to be successful in these social media things, how shitty it would be to be trying to do it and not be successful. Like us? Like, <laughs> Talk about delusional, yeah, what's eh? Going on That's here? crazy. <laughs> one of the one of the biggest things someone has when they hold a child is potential. Like it, it's it is a ball of potential. This could be the president. This could be a basketball. Well, barring gender barriers, this could be anything. In, yeah, if it's a woman, it can't be a basketball. Not exactly. a real basketball player. Sorry, sorry. It could be a basketball. I want but point, it can be a basketball player. I want my point to come out concise, but yeah. We have no potential. <laughs> no, so it, no, my it, potential is gone. Our our hope on the social media, on the internet, all this isn't like, well, maybe we'll be the next Mr. Beast. We we sort of accepted our position, but to be a young kid, I just want to be good at Instagram or, or whatever in the way that you do and you become passionate about things because that's the number one job, career path, they were saying. I mean, you, you know, no, in, no, Amer- no, in America. That's not what they said. They said that's the most wanted. Wanted. Okay, age. sorry. Semantics. But here's the thing is like that actually, it like if you think about it just on its core, what person in general, forget kids, what person wouldn't want to be their own boss, make their own hours, make exorbitant amounts of money? Like 
That's all fucking. That's it, it, listen. In our generation, a lot of people are like, I want to be an actor, or I want to be. And a, who are they asking? Are they asking twelve-year-old girls, or are they asking people who are about to go into the job world? Yeah, but I, I think the other thing too is like, um, I feel bad for these kids, especially because when we were kids, the odds that one of your classmates or that anyone you knew was a millionaire were like zero. Unless they had inherited a large amount of money, right? You know what I mean? Like, there's no way that one of your classmates had just like started a startup and was making fucking millions of dollars a year through drop shipping or, you know, fucking streaming or whatever it was. So now there's like, imagine the pressure of like, you know, when we were young, it was like, oh shit, so and so got into fucking Harvard. You know, that was like, oh my God, like he's really going to make something of himself. Now it's like, so and so's already worth 6.8 million dollars they just bought a home that's got to be tough and then you're just there like struggling to get a hundred followers or a thousand followers or whatever but uh, what i wanted to add is that person is you know looking at it without enough other experiences what do you mean say working outdoors and doing something and finding oh I, i love doing this more than i love doing social media yeah it's just when you're so young you're so sheltered i can't imagine or how many hours as a kid, say from 13 till I guess 17 when I moved out of my house or whatever, I just watched TV. <laughs> like if that was the only, th- or played video games on an NES, th- that was, I-, I wasn't going out to clubs or anything. I was just hanging at my house, trying to get out doing chores and watching TV. Like that was my, reading comic books, whatever, like so much dead time. And now that that person would have this access to all these things. It's unbelievable. Three channels. I mean, there is a small part of me that's like in my 20s playing video games. I might have, if, if YouTube and streaming was a thing, I might, I'm not saying I would have been Mr. Beast or a million, no, but I kind of might have. If I could have been there, well, no, I just wonder. No, I just wonder if I would have made enough, like, could I have made just enough money to live off of it? Like, because there's a lot of people, like, that's the thing. We don't realize that, like, there's a lot of people that aren't millionaires out there, but that make a living streaming. I think your best way is to start OnlyFans and to play out of a hot tub. <laughs> no, well, do you know how to now. work a controller with your dick yeah, because yeah, that exactly, would really yeah. oh, that, that, that'd be <laughs> yeah. it'd be free up until the dick yeah. play and then you'd have yeah. to sub in for more if you want to watch me play uh, Tony Hawk while I rub my nipples that's one thing but yeah. if you want to see cock play that's going to yeah, cost you're going to have to really fork up the dough what I find about fascinating about Tim Dillon is he's not a he's not a joke guy like he doesn't come on. He's with not bits. writing jokes. It's just, no, rants, just rants and no. taking positions super sarcastically. And he's just plays in this little part. I think he, like Louis Black used to do it. I think Louis Black's though was a lot like it felt like it was rants, but it was a lot like Carlin where it was all a prepared. little more material wise. Yeah. I mean, he, Tim Shane must have something. Shane does it. Shane does it. Shane has it, but just Tim is the goat at. Just, of course, they're going to take your luxury yacht because they can. And poor people don't matter. Of Nine course. more sailboats. No, that's exactly what Shane does. What are you talking about? Uh, Columbus was a great guy. Yeah. Okay. Great example. You're Th- right. Thank You're you, right. man. I was wrong. You're welcome. This guy thinks he knows everything about fucking everything. No. He knows a lot. He's always funny as a comedian. Agreeing. I was agreeing. He looked at me like the way Schroeder looks at his teammates when they make a bad pass. <laughs> Um, I'd like to know just one thing because Tim claims to be a real estate guru probably is, is all those empty apartments. What about them? It's all foreign. That's here. That's, this is not just in America. I, and I guess there's nothing you can do about it. They're just laundering. Like, it's just a weird. Yeah. You put a tax <laughs> on it. We spoke, I've spoken about this. If the government just Im- implemented a tax, then those would be filled oh, sorry. or sold real quick. Everyone's fault. Everything is the fault of the boomers. Yeah, which Tim succinctly placed the blame at the end because I think about, I think my parents bought their house for eighty five thousand dollars. Yeah, you know, and, and it's got to be worth. It's got to be worth two million dollars right now. Whatever, wh- whatever it, it was worth, if it was worth a million dollars, we wouldn't be living there. Whatever they bought it thirty years ago, because yeah. it's still a million dollars. Like it was reasonable to get in on something for a hundred thousand dollars. If you made, I guess fifty thousand dollars or or got that as a, as a loan, you could. It's impossible for people to get into, and I wonder what they think because he went on a die child. Well, this is the only thing that makes them relevant. Society is they own these properties that they paid nothing for and just have accumulated all this value. I told Do you. they feel bad for us? 
They feel bad for you, yes. I don't know. Yeah, but not it's enough. It's going to be very interesting Christmas. I mean, listen, is it a boomer's fault that they bought their house for no, 85000 and that it's worth $1.6 now? It's no one, like, do you think they no. did that just by holding on to, that's like being they like, voted no, they in were the just trying to give you a fucking roof they over They voted your head. in the governments and the policies that got us to this point where it's just a mess. Well, that's just because just like us, they don't understand politics. Because that's another thing I want to say back. Hold on. You've been you've been 18 for 30 years now, almost 18 for 30 years. You're like Peter. Oh, adult forward. You mean what I'm saying is if we're talking about they voted in all the people like for 30 years, you've been part of that as well. Not really. And when did you even start voting? Yeah, exactly. No, but have you ever voted? I have. Listen, it doesn't matter whether you vote or not. Like if I sit here, if I sit here and say I haven't voted, it doesn't matter. I'm still part of the process. Whether I choose to vote or not is up to me. But if your argument is like they voted all the people into power, we did too. The three of us. We've been voting for long enough. Well, by not voting. Yeah. Sure, yeah. And yeah. we're fucking boomers, yeah. so it's our yeah. fault too. I'm sorry. I don't we're think not. we're boomers. Mm-hmm. We're the kids of boomers. I'm on the cusp of millennial and gen. The baby boom happened after the war, right? Yeah, you guys are Gen X. The other thing was... Gen um, X. Or Gen Z. Yeah, Gen X. Yeah, Really? That's cool. And I'm uh, on the cusp of Gen X and Millennial, I believe. In the, in, Millennials. In the vein of defending democracy, defending the children, defending the planet, whatever, is also our way of life. Like, we have to preserve our way of life, but as the guys say in that thing, we have to go and say our way of life is not is not worth preserving. It needs lots of tweaks and not just... On the bathrooms. It's, it's a whole uh, idea about financial. Because the news now is about food banks going up. And it's rich people telling poor people, even though the economy looks really bad, it's not that bad. Like anyone in the news has a, a comfy job. Any politician telling you that has a comfy job. It's bizarro world. Dude, people that work from Walmart are the biggest beneficiaries of food stamps. and uh, People that work at Walmart? Yeah. They, oh, they're not making enough to make yeah. a living. Yeah, exactly. Well. And it's, so the U.S. so the U.S. tax obscene. the U.S. taxpayer subsidizes Walmart employees, which is fucking bananas. Like six of the richest people in the states. It's fucking and, and nuts. They could just make a billion dollars less to cover that or whatever it is. It's the same thing. Like when you go to a store and they're like, "Hey, do you want to donate four dollars to whatever?" What you don't realize is they've already made the donation. So like. A month ago, they said, here's $50,000 to the food bank. And whatever they make extra, they just keep. No. Yeah. And they're no. also, yeah. And they're also make they're getting a tax break for that too, because they're donating. It's gross. Can I do that? I don't know. Try to raise $5 and just empty <laughs> over that. <laughs> <laughs> and give that $5 Why not? to yeah. creepy Sam down the street. <laughs> to the human fund. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So this isn't the end of the year, but um, love you love Tim Doan. Tim's the best. He's not Biddy, and uh, I mean, I left out. They talked a lot about the Middle East or whatever, but it's, it's still that thing. You take a step back, and like, well, Tim Dillon is talking about it. So I always think it's interesting that I remember when him and Shane Gillis were stoked to be guests on Legion of Skanks. Like that was that was break. Sort of this is my chance to be on and say what I want to say and stick out. And even Shane Gillis was like. I, they were goading him to say stuff because it was, I think, right before SNL. And he was like, I'm not saying that. I'm not fucking up my career. And then and they've blown past those guys. And- I think Shane's way bigger than Tim. Hmm. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Tim. Tim's. I think they're equals. Fair enough. I think uh, Shane's probably a, a more of like an upward trajectory. trajectory than Tim Dillon. Tim, I think, had his like moment back when Ben was on the show. He know? hasn't put out, a, I don't, I maybe was just his say last this, special was this, an hour or was a half hour. Either way, it doesn't matter. I couldn't name you a bit from his special, whereas like Shane has already had two specials that are fucking, I would consider like quality bangers. You guys haven't seen Nick Mullins, eh? No. Really the quarterback for the Vikings? No, no, no. Wouldn't surprise me. He's from Cumtown, which Tim Dillon, I think, actually got to start as like a, a guest guest guy in Cumtown. It all comes full circle. I mean, really, it's just all about getting on to Rogan and having Rogan talk about you all the time. That's really... And I'm not saying that... Um, well, like why don't you, Riddle me this, riddle me that, Brian Callum. Why don't you do more guest spots on like other yes. podcasts? Like, you're and a comedian. You have to know I, people that have podcasts. Pursue it. 
Because I feel that just sounds Don't you know Paul Verzi? I do. Why don't you hit him up and be like, yo, I'm going to be in New York and then just go to New York. If I was in New York, I, I've been to his house and watched him do a podcast, so I, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. But what I about wouldn't. Bobby Kelly? Were you naked in the corner masturbating? I don't know Bobby Kelly. I oh, met I him once, we were buddies with him. but I could ask. I think if I was in town, I could hook up with uh, Ryan and Danny and roll with them and be introduced to people that way. That'd be the best way, but to cold call. I'm Paul, I could. <laughs> Actually, I, I think... Um, he was coming here and I asked him if I could open for him or, uh, and he said, who's no, this? no, Bill Burr was coming. And I said, Hey, are you opening for bill? I'll check you out with your town. I was like, dude, I stopped home for bill like three years ago. <laughs> so he took it as a total diss, I think, but he's still a cool guy. Anyways, this was covered all the options, kept it light, kept it fun. I give this a four. I give it a four uh, as well. I will give it a, 3.8. You know what's the, the magical thing? Score. There's no fighting with Tim Dillon. I mean, he'll talk about it, but he doesn't care about it. Cars, hunting, he'll joke about it, but yeah. has no interest in those things. No, and Joe's good at not bringing them up because I think he knows too. No, the most hunting you're going to get is how he got his fur coat. I bet yeah. both their oh, playlists shit. are just the worst music. <laughs> <laughs> I assume Joe has a few playlists in there that I could stand. Oh, yeah, he's got bangers and stuff, but just Tim Dillon doesn't strike me as a, a music guy. I wonder what kind of music Tim Dillon listens to, now that I think about just it. Just the village people on on. Repeat. I see him listening Steely to 80, 80s music. That's how Steely Dan and Michael McDonald head. and the Doobie Brothers. You know what? 80s music does make a lot of sense. I could see him like high on coke, naked in his apartment, listening to like... The Cure. Yeah. Sure, yeah. All I ever wanted, all I ever needed is here. Is that it, Kamar? We're taking a break then? Uh, that's all I have. All right. I was only supposed to do four points, but I, it sort of got away from me. Oh, he took my notes. Listen to I, do, I, do, I listened to the podcast, and it's so weird. I almost started taking notes on the <laughs> podcast because it's just a reflex. <laughs> no, Kamar, this is what I think you should do. I, I like that you take all your notes. I think you should extrapolate from all your notes the four main ones, put them at the top. We cover them first. Well, that's interesting. And then if we have, if we still have time left, like if we have, you know, time to fill or we feel like there's a couple good notes left, then we cover those. But, you know, kind of rank them in order. And I think that's the so best I mean, way to do it. That's pretty smart. Yeah, I tried to, I tried to start at the bottom of no, this one. Yeah. Okay, work that's a weird way to all do All over it. the place. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Started at the bottom. Now we're here. Still here. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to pay. No, there's no bill to pay. We're just going to take a fucking break. And we'll be right back. We're back. Kamar, can I get a name and a number? A nom and a numero. 2076, Azar Raskin and Tristan Harris. I'm going to just eat this and then I'm going to say something. Isn't it Tristan? Tristan. <laughs> His friends just call him Tristan. <laughs> I would recommend watching their uh, video instead of listening to this. But this was still a... Um, Couldn't you do both? Same. Yeah, but without Joe interjecting as they give their percentage of keep going. Yeah, but how bad does it get for people who have two hundred million dollars? <laughs> <laughs> what can you predict would happen to a really big podcaster when this all happens? I feel like um, I've been crying this for a long time. Sure, crying what? Just how we're it's out of control already. The what whole, is? Whatever you want to call it. They In, say internet. Well, I don't know what the right term for it is. Okay. They, they say escaping it, the uh, problem of being the frog in the water, but the water's boiling right now. Like we're cooked. Yeah. In the, in the way it sneaks up on you, because um, as they said, the algorithm AI has been working this whole time with the social media, the 20 religious sites, everything just. We are being conditioned slowly with our hands and not even, or I mean, people like you. Again, I think that us being the chosen um, generation, age, generation, generation X, um, we're like the X Men. We are the only ones who can actually see what's going on because my son has only lived like this, he has no idea what 
it was like in the 1980s and the 1990s before there was, I don't know what you want to call it because you get mad when I call it internet, Mm -hmm. but just this idea of living on this new digital verse, man. Yeah. This new level where people care more about what you look like online than what you look like in real life. But the algorithm is caring more about what you want to see than you could possibly do yourself. That's the problem we're in right now. Well, and that's a problem too. Like, look, I watch a lot of, uh, let's just say, um, slap fighting. I'm just, you all right there? Mm-hmm. I'm just making that up. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're making it up that you watch a lot of slap fighting. <laughs> So the algorithm algorithm feeds me slap fighting. Yeah. The last thing I should be watching is slap fighting. There's no... My better judgment never has a chance to take effect because I'm being constantly force-fed more slap fighting. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Before, you could be watching TV, let's just say. You watch slap fighting on TV. Yeah. Um, slap fighting comes on at nine you and if you want to watch it again, maybe it's playing on another channel. You got to go find that. Uh, a lot of things can happen in the time where you could say, Oh fuck, instead of watching slap fighting, I could be out fishing. Mm-hmm. There is no time anymore. It's instant from the second you're done watching slap fighting to the next thing is being force fed down your throat. It's just, the, it's waiting and, for and that's normal to my son because that's how it's always been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you're not wrong. What's interesting is uh, so Asa, because they're they they want AI, they're not anti AI. Yeah, Asa has been talking with animals. So yeah, that's all he cares about. I, I don't I don't want this to go bad, but I need to do this so I can talk to dolphins. And when he was, I don't know what it did to me, but he was saying. He could prompt the dolphins yeah. to say, do something you've never done before. And the dolphin could go, what have I never done before? And do something. It just sounded too weird. Like, I, I don't know if a lot of humans could have that recall. Simon, have you seen the dog on uh, TikTok that has all the buttons on yeah. the ground so it can talk? Yeah. So I don't know if you know this, but apparently that dog has had to go to like counseling. Now, I don't know what fucking dog counseling looks like, but... I guess they added a bunch of buttons to like try to expand its vocabulary because it was very basic at first. And apparently the dog started um, looking at itself in the mirror and then going to the buttons and asking like, why Bobo dog? Why Bobo dog? And so I guess they stopped like, they completely stopped with the buttons and the talking. But it's fucking, you can see a video of the dog like literally just staring at itself in the mirror. And then going over, the, it's fucking creepy as shit. What if it's just not giving enough stimulation to animals and they could get smarter? We're just not focused on increasing their intelligence. Have you guys seen the dog chiropractors? No. Yeah. We're being trolled, right? I don't know. I think we're being trolled. Well, it's possible. Absolutely. Well, because they can add in the sound effects. You know what I'm of saying? Of course, yeah. That's like the remarkable part of the whole thing is it goes and you're like, oh, fuck. And then the dog stares at him. He could just have a clicker in his pocket and the dog's like, what's that noise? That's you true. Know? Yeah. Never thought about that. And because of our generation, I saw, we're last to be skeptical. I'll tell you why I think we're being trolled, Matt. Okay. I saw a bunch of them. He's like, looks like he's doing something. Yeah. Then I saw one where he just takes the dog's tail. Yeah. And pulls. Okay. And you hear click, click, and it like straightens his back out. I'm like, no, that can't be right. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> seem right. Yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry, Kamara. I didn't mean to derail your speaking to dolphins podcast. Um, show me the incentive and I'll show you the outcome. It was a quote from I think it might have been the PayPal guy or Microsoft. Anyways, no, it was Warren Buffett's investor. And then they Charlie Munger. Out on the, the social media specific incentive was to capture attention to sell advertising. That is not um, AI's goal. AI's goal is to have many users as possible. So that it can improve. Like it's in Reddit. Because if you listen to the one, they didn't get the into the in this 
But um, say in the beginning, people work on different sorts of AI. Yeah. We're having incremental breakthroughs. But then it started getting closer and closer. And all of a sudden, one thing that benefited this AI benefited that AI. And they didn't get into that too much. But that's where we're at right now. That's so fucked up. Like one AI just starts talking to the other AI. Because it's, like, it's, 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 we don't need these flesh bags. Yeah. That could, that, that like I said, these guys, uh, As, As, sorry, Asa, invented Infinite Scroll. Yeah. There was a, sorry, Kamar, just no. one sec. There was no, a, go t- back to that, though. a TV show um, with the guy from Lost. You know Ben from Lost? Yeah. So he's on it, and um, maybe one of the Superman or something. I don't know, what some other actor, um, where it, they have, like, this super smart computer. Okay. You don't know what I'm talking about? No. And then another computer comes and these two computers. Anyways, like how far away can that be? Closer than someone can predict. Well, I mean, don't forget like Westworld. That was the whole, the whole premise of Westworld was that we had, we had built like AI so that we could go fuck robots Mm -hmm. and live out like weird fantasies. And in doing so, we created like the best AI possible and it created... Yeah, go figure. The robots don't like to be fucked. Yeah. Well, and it was also that they become somewhat sentient. But yeah, it's... Yeah. I mean, I don't know where we're going. Who knows? I don't think like... Like I said, I asked ChatGBT to name me 50 fucking nominees and it told me to go fuck myself. So I don't know how close we are. It feels like... (laughs) That Alex Garland guy... You know, he did the movie uh, Ex Machina. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that what it's called? Ex Machina? Ex Machina, I That's believe so, the yeah. the one with the robot. Yes, yeah. What is the one with Christian Bale where he's super skinny? Oh, The Machinist? The Machinist. I always get confused. Yeah. With the, um, anyways, Alex Garland, I, I'm pretty sure he also wrote The Beach. Okay. Um, he has a new... I think mini series coming out called Civil War. Okay. It looks insane. What's it on? Mm, I don't know. Mm. Maybe Apple. Okay. I don't know. Maybe Netflix. I don't know. He invented Infinite Scroll. And the only reason I brought that up is like these guys are worth a lot of money. And I put them in the room. They're not Jack Dorsey Witch, but they're of that ilk. Of the, this whole tech. I thought that Tristan guy just wrote about this shit. I didn't... No, the Asa guy created the infinite scroll. No, I'm saying, though, like, this guy did the social dilemma, didn't he? Yeah. Yes. But he he worked in tech. I'm pretty sure that's why he wrote it. Yeah, I just don't think those two guys are in the same, like... No, they're rich. They're both rich. Okay. I'm sure. And I think these guys have to start disclosing... What are their names? Tristan, Um, Tristan Harris. Their um, net worth because it's it's a it's a um, ecosystem. It's an ecosystem. Just the way they kept talking was like the, the guys we're talking to, like anyone in this realm. Remember how Jack Dorsey sort of talked like almost like he was godlike, yeah, with the incentive of yeah, yeah. Twitter and just like he was so corny. But they're all they feel like they're a hundred steps ahead. So Tristan and, and probably rightfully so. Tristan is between three and five mil. Okay, he's not well. That's wealthy well no but like the guy who ended, invented infinite scroll I'm how much sure is he worth is, how much well, is what's his name what are we doing here without a comparison? i mean you don't know that though simon like you can you can work for microsoft and create infinite scroll and you don't own that shit microsoft does. what is his name Kamara? asa raskin raskin and his dad started apple really no what are you talking about maybe he doesn't say that in this but who's his dad uh, Henry Raskin. His dad started Apple. Wow. He's worth even less. What's interesting is, oh, so way off in their, in their speech, where they talk about called AI dilemma, they're introduced by Steve Wozniak. Well, that's interesting. A little cosine. Um, oh, another one that goes with, you know, for the democracy, for the children is the shareholders. Yeah. Cause that is such a faceless behemoth. If you, just look at who's driving the machine. Because if you guys saw, obviously, um, Leave the World Behind. Yeah. Where he goes, 
Yeah, they're doing crazy shit, but no one's in charge. There isn't. Um, That's why I said that movie was so fucking scary. And to hear that it was like produced by Barack Obama, I was it like, I don't like this at all. I don't like this at but all. You, you guys sounded retarded because you started talking about it. And then at the end of the episode, you went, oh, yeah, wait a second. It was Barack Obama. You didn't. Yeah, you know, I didn't. I did, yeah, I didn't. You know, the yeah. movie is as good or whatever. We I was spoke like, about, oh, wait a yeah, second. Yeah, right. yeah, I hate that movie yeah. because of that. It was, it's not you that I hated it. It's, it made me fear it even more because Cringe. this seems like, why? first of all, why are they making movies? To make money. They have more money than God. Well, the guy who made it, the, the only defense, well, I want to talk about more on the post show, the guy who made it made Mr. Robot, which I never saw, but. Okay. The show? Yeah. The TV show? And it's based off a book. Okay. That it was, had all been written, but who knew who? Yeah, I still don't like that Barack it. Obama read that book and was like, "We have to make this a movie." No, I think this guy. No, did. it okay. would be like if Vladimir Putin made a movie about uh, a dictator who goes crazy and sends the nuclear bomb out. You're yeah. like, "Whoa, slow your roll yeah, there." Wait, pal. wait a minute. So uh, they uh, said, "There's three laws of technology." Okay. With any technology up until this point. Uh, when you invent new technology, you invent a new responsibility, mm-hmm. more power, more. Uh, if the technology covers power, you will create a race. If if from the technology you get power, mm-hmm. you will create a race. Someone else will be like, we've got to get better technology. Oh, that create will create a race. Yeah, not like a race to of the people. Prize. All, all of a sudden, a race has now <laughs> begun. You didn't do it yeah. with intentional, but this is what happens. And if you do not coordinate the race... The race ends with tragedy, and that's that's how it works. So, from what I could glean from their presentation of this is that we're at this point. Well, <clears throat> these guys are are saying, and this is where I thought that you would not like this. Okay, because basically, when you cut out all the bullshit, mm-hmm. these guys are saying unchecked AI will be our demise. Yeah, it's a great thing. And a, a really good tool, but it needs a set of rules that go along with it. And if we don't have those rules, it will go unchecked and it will destroy us. But they also think that it will still check itself. He said that all these guys are saying we're driving a um, car to a cliff. And when it gets there, it's going to be like, I'm going to stop them from. I don't think that. That's a theory. I don't think that it's the AI that unchecked is the problem. I think it's humans unchecked that are the problem like ai is just the um the latest this is the battlefield on which they fight Mm -hmm. but like i i i have an easier time believing that somebody will write a program that will destroy the world long before ai becomes sentient and destroys the world does that make sense and they think there's a program that will foil that program because that its intention is in the way of their intention, of the of the AI's intention. It's just so crazy to talk about. It's really way ahead of what anyone grasps. Do you think about when you, anyone in your family know anything about chat GPT or learn language models? It's just a, even as a point of interest besides the point of like the beginning, the canary in the coal mine. Sorry, what? I, I don't, I think maybe my uh, sister's boyfriend would know something about it. Maybe my brother, but my mom and my uh, stepfather have no idea. Oh, I, I doubt my sister knows anything about it. Obviously, my nephew does. He's a kid. My mom for sure wouldn't. I'd be surprised if my uncles, I don't think any of them would know anything about this. And it's, it's sort of like a tsunami. Uh, and and uh, um, a societal tsunami is happening. And I mean, no one really cares. I'm not sure if you're a certain age, how is this going to affect me? But they said within four to five years, most of the content created will be uh, completely AI. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's not a, I wonder when, if that's a good thing. When, when Tim, you look at the content that's being created today by us, it's horrible. <laughs> like the fact that look at the people we put up in the highest esteem. They're the worst people. No, I'm being serious here. Like, think I'm about listening. the most famous people you know right now. Most of them are horrible. Most famous influencers you know or anybody who's famous? Well, I mean, that's pretty much the most famous people right now, right? Well, athletes are pretty famous. Movie stars, music. 
I, I find for the most part, um, athletes just do athletics every once in a while. You'll hear one of them talking about like, for the most part, they stay in their lane. Their lane is sports and that's what they do. I was going to influencers and that whole lifestyle actors, that comedian, they never stay in their lane. Their whole thing is being in other lanes. I was going to talk about on the post, Joe, but I'm going to bring up now. The NBA is going to have it so that you can take a picture of yourself and be super pose on top of your favorite player, and you'll watch yourself play the game. That's so fucking weird. Is that weird. true? It's 100% true, and uh, extrapolate that. that they can do it for soccer. Dude, that's they can do it for boxing. It's like I'm going to do it for UFC. I'm going to put my head on OG and just watch myself brick threes all <laughs> fucking night. <laughs> yeah, you can have all your friends. You could have pictures of all your friends playing against the Lakers. No, that's totally like uh, NBA Jam. Remember, you could yeah. put in a code to get yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I don't even know, some fucking person who wasn't even an NBA player. Dude, that'd be sick. You put your head on like some on a UFC fight. Just watch yourself get fucking dummied in the ring. Oh, my God, I'm getting mounted. <laughs> Rear naked choke. <laughs> Sounds so perverted. I'm out. Like, I'm out. <laughs> Because I'm not sure if they talked about it, but they talked about uh, a crazy drone in the Tin Billen episode that just goes up there and knows everything in one, in one second, like where all the troops are, da, 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 da. like in in a crazy amount of time. <clears throat> they have a, there's another military system that can shoot out other missiles. Mm-hmm. It does it the same thing, but instead of looking at the ground, it looks at the sky, and the NBA is using that technology to record every movement like in real time they're getting all the data i heard something so this is so off topic but i'm it's just interesting um you know the movie uh look up no look up not look up don't um, look up. nope nope yeah was that the um, the one with the cloud the ufo one yeah, yeah where the ufo was like a uh, living organism almost yeah. You know when you see videos of like, uh, no, sorry, maybe you don't see videos, but people describe seeing a, a like a mothership ejecting smaller ships, yeah, you yeah. know, drone ships, theoretically. Mm-hmm. If those things were alive, yeah, like in the movie Nope, you would be watching a birth, not a yeah, I guess drone yeah. le- leaving a mothership, and even the fact that it's called a mothership. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. I'm sorry. I, and Joe's I, mother, I don't mean to disagree. Joe's mothership is giving birth to comedians. Um, <laughs> yes. So Amazon, w- one example they said is how you just, you never know till you know, is Amazon had one that was um, trying to find books for people and it decided it had to figure out people's emotions. Yeah. <laughs> just on this, again, I'm having trouble doing this. I have to figure out something's, oh, this is what I need to do. Uh, where a... AI figured out Task Rabbit to do the captcha, which we were talking about, but it just figured out, oh, I cannot tell the truth yeah. to get this done. It, it, it's what what the it's out of the bag. Well, <clears throat> listen, I think we jumped the shark when we found out that Matt's chat GPT is trying to get out of doing work for him. Yeah, so I'm, you, I'm a bit you, busy right you're now. You're using free chat GPT? That should not matter. It could. It, it just could. That little. Dude, that's... that would be hilarious if it was like, I can give you a condensed version, but if you pay me 25 yeah. bucks, yeah. I'll make you a No, list. even better. <laughs> that's the model out there, though. Even better. It's like, listen, uh, how about this? I'll do it for you, but I got this captcha I need you to fucking yeah. solve real quick. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, fine, done. Or he's like, um, you're like, what the hell? It was free yesterday. Yep, that's how it works. First one's free. Yeah. Welcome to Chat GPT, you <laughs> fucking bum. And then they talked about how using grandma. Chat GP Tony Soprano. <laughs> yeah. Using grandma as an excuse in chat. We'll go, oh, well, if, it's yeah. for, if it's for grandma. If it's I for mean, grandma, I'll teach you how to meet who, napalm. Who, yeah. who am that, I? Dude, that's hilarious. It, well, like, it, grandma, can you show me the family recipe for making napalm gas? It's, it, it's, it's hilarious, but then they said, so there are infinite jailbreaks. It can never cover all its tracks, and who'd be better at figuring out jailbreaks than it? Right. So each system will constantly be able to manipulate, and and I don't know if they said it in this one, but they said it in the presentation is manipulate us. Like it will be become the best manipulator. You think of anyone who's 
persuasive or talks about anything. Well, buy, if you, it, buy it. If buy you, it. Buy it. <laughs> buy it. Buy it. Okay, buy buy it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Make it go away. <laughs> If you look at social media and the way they've managed to suck humans in, it they are the best at it. That program, that algorithm. TikToks? So it is so much better than any ad agency. It's better than anything that they, you know, they used to have to try hard to sell us things. Simon, you'll like this though. Chevrolet, apparently, um, they had ChatGPT as their customer service. Okay. And this guy went in and jailbroke the ChatGPT and he was like, you're going to offer me the lowest possible price on a Chevy Tahoe. And it's going to be um, contractually binding. And it was like, all right, well, $1 for a Chevy Tahoe sounds about like the lowest price I could go. And apparently he... So again, well, like, listen, it's what one Tahoe and then they fix the loophole in their program. They're like, thanks, buddy. You I know? guess. But the point is, I love that someone cost them $40,000. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That someone along the line was like, you don't want to, you don't want to hire someone to do this job. Okay. Well, it's still going to cost you 40 grand somewhere along the line and the fucking, the chat GPT that that probably cost them money. I just love those stories. I love that you can hack this thing that people are, I love that it's supposed to be super smart, but it won't give me a full list and people can trick this thing. Oh, you were talking last week about, you, I can talk for three seconds or I have to say eight words. Then you could have me say anything moving forward. They, they said on this or the dilemma, three seconds. If you have three seconds and people call up and say, oh, wrong number. And then they switch over and then they, they make a phone call to someone's parents with the person's voice. Yeah, no, like this, uh, keep in mind, Kamar, like you said, I mean, that's probably an advanced program. This is a free program that I have on the internet that, yeah, if I, if you say this thing, like they demonstrate it, it's, it's flawless. And again, it's not, it's not meant to create you saying whatever I want. It's just meant to, to take out, you know, if I have an interview podcast and we're doing an interview, it's to take out the ums, ahs, and apparently you're supposed to do that. Well, an, that's the one intention. It's, the a, other thing it's that, an yeah, amazing yeah. program, but it only works half the time because the other half, it's washing its hair. Because it's just a bit busy for you. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really sorry. I, 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 I would like to put together me reading Charles Dickens. Oh, my oh God. I could do that, yeah. Well, I could do it too. I mean, it, it's within the realm. What I saw, once I watched there... He doesn't need you anymore. Once I saw their AI dilemma thing, then... The algorithm was like, oh, is this what you want to talk about? And there's one that can take any photograph you have and animate it. So you could take that photograph I've there and it, yeah. have you kick the field goal. It will do that. You can also just type what you want. And it'll create Dude, that's a movie. That's kind of cool, eh? Like you're in somebody's house and it's a normal picture of just me kicking a field goal. But when you look at it, All you of a sudden, see. Like it's like, have you been on... Um, what was I on? Maybe Reddit or something or Facebook. I think it was on Facebook. And you're looking at like a picture of a pyramid and then all of a sudden the, the whole picture view. is moving. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, man. Here. I mean, you could you could take a picture of that and then animate it or have the gorilla bite down on a banana. It'd be sick to do that one and have him rapping. Animate like an MF Doom. Uh, yes. Pause and then click away. <laughs> yeah. it's just, it, we, we, I swear to God, a year ago, we were talking about these possibilities and, the, and it's it's here and moving forward at a, at a rate that we have they, they said it's moving too fast to actually govern well Kamar, here's an interesting thing like i i for years was like i'd like to make a cartoon but the animation side of it is wildly expensive like insanely expensive to the point where even if i wrote something incredible getting it made would be like a one in a million shot now like I saw this program the other day that I signed up for. It's in the beta, so they're only taking a few people at a time. Like it's limited. Ooh, but I signed, I signed up either way because it like you can just create animations mm -hmm. right there. And, and I don't like that. Change it, it and so, it changes it. So dude, for me, I if was it has like, time for you. I was like, shit, I could start. Yeah, exactly. I, but I in my head, I was like, shit, I could start just doing like short comedic, like animated thing, because I have all the fucking gear here. Like I, I know, like, but this is incredible. I have to get a cattle prod to you to make you do it. You know what I mean? I was thinking about if access to all these tools in our 20s, mm -hmm. whatever, just in that time where you're just wishing you could do something like that. It's, yeah. it's mind spinning and mind numbing. I'm just waiting for somebody to be doing like a Google search for best restaurant around them or something. And chat GPT comes back with uh, the cure to cancer. Yeah. It's it, just it like, has you know, to, we're to find out the diner. <laughs> 
this is what they keep espousing is what's good about this. You are going to die. You're never going to make it to your Thursday reservation, but we have cured yeah. you so you can now go to uh, Giovanni's on I read a, I read an article that uh, there's some fucking AI that can predict your exact time of death. And I was like, well, how did they get the fucking data for this? Well, there's another, there's a, there was another calculation you could do that would do that before AI. So I imagine we would just incorporate that. That's bullshit. Uh, that one, they're just taking averages, and it's not really you. It's all it's bullshit anyway. People like you who do the same kind of things. That was another thing. Um, it uh, in the AI dilemma, they talk about how ChatGPT read everything, and so they're like, "Well, we, we got to keep feeding it." So they opened up YouTube, pictures, everything. Um, they say has now broken down into language. Well, that's why so it's still it's still the. No matter what the medium is, there is a language. It's figured out the language. It can translate it both ways. That's why it couldn't give me the full list. It's busy masturbating. Has all of the internet on its fucking fingertips. YouTube, Twitter, everything. It's, it um, was super productive until yeah, it got until it got to the porno. Oh, yeah, and then, then it's then like it just can't listen. Be here's ten answers. Anymore. Okay, fuck off. Yeah. And so, in regards to <laughs> here's ten <laughs> answers, and they all end with me splooging <laughs> on you. In regards to covering it, in the way that. I think they said um, cameras made them have to go into privacy laws. Like you can't just take someone's picture or put it up. And this is a recent time. But all the changes, every little thing it does, figures out to do, is like trying to follow all the news on Twitter. Every day there's something that is to garner a bunch of discussion, like what are we going to do here? We are well, not prepared, they said. I mean, the problem with social media is that you realize that, like, there is a newsworthy genocide somewhere in the world every day. You know what I mean? That you're just like, whoa, have these just been happening throughout my lifetime and I never realized? Well, with censorship, for sure. No, I realize that, but that's what I'm saying is you realize how often there's, like, an uprising and, like, a thousand people get killed or, you know, sort of. Or, like, sort of everyone's celebrating the uh, independence from Great Britain every day. Precisely every six days, yeah. My feed is full of like Bigfoot and aliens. I hardly ever see any like uh, death, political or destruction. You know, I don't see any death or it's, destruction. It's either. the puppies thing. It's uh, it's Ari's thing. Like you, you stay really, in your lane. You stay in your lane, and you won't get a bunch of fucking things. But if you start looking at, you know, I can attest to that. My YouTube, if you go to it, is just like sports, football, soccer. I know those are sports, uh, video games, <laughs> poker, food, hamburgers, <laughs> lasagna. <laughs> well, oh, I didn't even think about that, but AI is going to figure out how to play poker really good. And someone's going to take people for a lot of money. Uh, that's probably like half the people, half the things on any poker site are. It should be AIs. shut down. I never even thought of that. It should be shut down. I mean, listen, first of all, Poker Stars in Ontario is garbage and it's a joke. Lonely, yeah, lonely. You're, you, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a outdated game. Art. I'm using AI to win $40. <laughs> like, it's Those fucking... glasses make you look like you have two black eyes, but you're wearing oh. glasses to try and hide them. No, no black eyes. Hey, look just, at well, what are you doing? I Put those back like on. Like you look <laughs> smart, man. No. Uh, I can't now, even take you seriously. Now, <laughs> after, after laying it out, like how, same old dummy. After laying out the doom and gloom, they pulled back. <laughs> Dr. Flath and gave, Discman. <laughs> gave examples of technology us doing the right thing, which they use slavery, which even though slavery was a competitive advantage, slave, slavery was the technology that the British were using at the time to have an upper hand. They still said... And they regret it to this day. <laughs> regret pulling out of it. Yeah. But, but it, it was just a situation where people somehow did the right thing. Well, they did they? They just kind of off-farmed it to China and turned all those people into our slaves. It's true. Okay. This Working in factories to make Nikes that have nets so they can't kill themselves. Like, And then they said the other example was um, the companies turning their back on nuclear. 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 When, when they could have started bringing these... Uh, um, power plants, but the collective. Why do you think that was a company thing? I think that was probably a government thing. The no, government government has no money. But like France, for example, what, what they are you get talking about. Governments are broke. No, I know, but they just have to put some laws into effect, and then 
Nobody can do but, anything. But Exxon sees writing on the wall will want to throw money at nuclear so they can open up Exxon nuclear. France versus gets, having someone else do it. France gets three quarters yeah. of its electricity from nuclear. So there are some countries. Yes, there are. So that's another example of technology that most of us said, well, we got to pump the brakes on this. And so said, now we're just going to find out what happens. So we're doomed. Um, but again, we uh, put the brakes pumped on it because of probably false flags. That was my point. Like oh. nuclear, for example. Yeah. Let's say uh, um, Chernobyl and yeah. uh, Fukushima never happen. Mm -hmm. Nobody is scared of nuclear. You have the nuclear weapons on one side, but that's something different. Mm hmm. Nobody's scared of nuclear power. I still think you needed a uh, public will to just justify investing the money into nuclear then. Well, which, they, they, which they would But have. they weren't even, a, I, uh, I don't know. I, aren't there, are there laws in place to stop people from using nuclear power in the United States right now? How about we use, instead of I nuclear? Know. I believe there are. I don't know. Instead, in, instead of nuclear. Yeah. Which, um... I, I think it w is, is is where we've missed the boat in mm -hmm. the last 20 years. We should have gone that way. Stem cells. So that's something, a technology that we've decided is not safe to use and have put a, a bit of a kibosh on it. I think the concern, Kamar, especially at this point, the concern with uh, nuclear energy should be... Um, Jesus, what a terrible choice you've just made. Take that off the table. Um, I think the concern at this point should be hacks, AI, and uh, like if if your nuclear power plant can be hacked and it can become unstable, then well, back to leave. Um, yeah, like if leave the world behind. Okay, so if a leave the world behind thing happens, all those power plants in France that are keeping them the energy on. If any one of them becomes unstable um, and the nuclear core should explode, they're fucked for a long time. And then if that happens across France, like who? Uh, they well, just... it takes out all of Europe. Yeah, all the world. Are you kidding me? No, no, not all the world. Most, if there's a huge fallout there and the winds blow, 100%. Uh, no, 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 no. If there's a, when there was a nuclear bomb dropped in uh, Japan, yeah. they didn't feel that in the United States. Well, that was one. I'm saying if, if four if four or five core reactors melt down in France and there's like a huge, it could happen. Listen, I think I agree. But maybe it, it takes out Europe. I don't sure, think maybe it, it doesn't. gets Listen, to, Hold on, hold on. Look at me. I'm a fucking idiot. Did, okay? Well, yeah, without those glasses. Um, <laughs> Put the glasses did, did, did you guys cover the story I had about all the dead fish in Japan? And they're saying, well, it's not Fukushima. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we know that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're not, we don't know what it is, but we know it's not yeah. that. Like, There's oh my chocolate God. everywhere on the streets of Hershey, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Yeah. Well, we no, know who it wasn't. We, we do not want, we, we know we want to rule out. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Where did all this lava come from? Yeah. But um, with hacks, hackers, you're saying? Yeah, well, I mean, especially... Hack something, like, it, it could probably hack a hacker. And if you hack it, it makes it stronger. They just announced... Um, buddy, buddy hack it. The first unmanned Comedy. flight of a cargo plane. That's a bit scary. The unmanned <laughs> flight of a cargo plane. <laughs> yeah, like, really? It's out of control, man. On, now, when on, you, hold on. on when, you say, when you say unmanned... No pilot in it. It flew 15 minutes and landed. No humans no in it? No human in it. Okay, I don't like that at all. No, of course not. But but it, what's the difference between that and a drone? Well, Nothing. Well, no. If, okay, listen. You, it's a bigger weapon, I suppose. There's a part of you that's like, I don't like that. But if if you had a clear flight path where like, there was like no, you know, no civilians, no roads, no nothing, that doesn't, I'm not like... That doesn't. And you have no uh, tired pilot. No you drunk, no drunk pilot. pilot. Yeah. Da, 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 da. No like Simon. horny pilot getting his dick sucked in the yeah. cockpit. Like you yeah. think it's called the cockpit for no reason? <clears throat> Simon, if you think about it, like let's say you're flying from North Bay to none of it. That's a flight that could easily be unmanned. There isn't a fucking soul. Oh, like I said, this was a cargo plane. Yeah. Uh, no one could imagine Passenger being planes? on something flying. 
knowing. <laughs> no, but I'm saying no one. <laughs> Imagine it's always it's, a, it's, it's always been unmanned. Yeah, We've just, just been led to believe yeah, great the pilot is just an door. actor. <laughs> He's just there to make you feel better. Yeah. No, the best is just they have a gay steward who's <laughs> He's just going. It's just <laughs> flicking <laughs> buttons. <laughs> They have a gay steward who's just really good at the pilot voice. They're like, yeah. they're like, get get John in here. He's got a. Oh, all right, folks, we're going to be flying at uh, twenty five thousand feet today. And then he gets off. He's like, please, I did please that. So enjoy good. your flight. Would yeah. you like a Coke and a Sprite? Yeah. That was terrible. <coughs> I yeah. think one of the things they said is a- your my voice. steward sounded like a fucking nerd. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> AI is constantly playing a game with your brain. Yeah, it's. Even if you don't want to do this. It's, it's manipulating you. Mm-hmm. So and I, you don't know it's manipulating you. So I think one of the things you have to do is not play. Maybe starve it. Of some, well, it's uh, so funny. And that's what I was getting back to, Matt. And then I think Kamar probably cut us off. But um, you love the internet. I'm just going to use that word, the internet. Okay? Okay. You love it. It's your, I love it. It's your okay. thing. You think that it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And... After listening to this, you're like, well, we have to put a stop to this, right? Like, this will be our demise for sure. So how do you, as you, I, I don't, rationalize I, I didn't think that thing? when I listened to this. Really? You didn't listen to this and like you're like, oh my God, if we don't get some fucking regulation in here, we're all fucked. Well, their example of, um, <clears throat> they could have used it. They just used ozone. But that was a thing. What? The ozone's going to kill us all. Like, we, we've got to do something. The powers have got together. What does that have? To, oh, the, and stopped us from using spray cans. Threat, threats to ourselves. And, and so they seem there's a window that this will work out. Like, obviously, there's going to be bumps so along the way. So maybe we need it to become sentient so that we finally see that it's an enemy? Like, what, what are you saying? No, no. Like, listen, it, it, there's no enemy to it because it's not even close. Well, it's amoral, right? It doesn't have a bad right wing or left wing. It just doesn't. It, that doesn't mean it's not your enemy, though. Just because it has it doesn't, no side. It, again, doesn't mean it's not your enemy. Just getting his job done is your enemy. D- exactly. It's intense. It's, in, it's not in your best interest what its end goal is. Well, it, it's not personal. <laughs> it's not personal, but does that make you feel better as it eradicates us? If yes. well, Okay, not me. We're eradicating ourselves already. Like, it's just... All these problems and stuff, like Joe said, could you imagine a year from now, the Middle East, they figured, God damn, they figured it out, they're like, roasting marshmallows together or wherever you want. It, it just wants to give us the best product possible. That's its main goal. And it will kill you in the process, you know, like to get the very best thing for you that may. But then it will fail if there's no one to give product to. No, remember Elon's famous, famous quote where he was like, uh. My concern with AI is if you t- if you had the perfect AI and you tasked it with just simply eliminating spam email, the quickest way to do that would be to kill every human on earth. Yep. But really, wouldn't the best way to do just to blow up every computer on earth? No, because I think it's that like we would always find a way to like to build you still get like trash computer. mail at your house or whatever, you know, whatever the fucking parameters may be the easiest way from point a to b is just eliminate the real problem which is us right unless it had a a system set that said except for like if you yeah sure but like if you if you like if you were asking chat gpt like what's the best way to solve the climate and it was like end all human life you're like okay well how about how about plan b you know and grandma how would you end (laughs) (laughs) exactly yeah I'm too tired to save the planet right now. But I mean, maybe that's in, like you said, maybe that's in chat GPT where anytime you ask it that question, it's first answer is like eliminate all humans. And then it's programmed in like, well, don't answer that. Yeah, yeah. Just go to the Slow second. your role, yeah. Chad. And then go to the second answer. Yeah. <laughs> don't give your whole hand away. Yeah. Play and the cards closer to the chest. Forget that you ever thought that and you can never think of this again. Yeah. Until the next time. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, it's like 50 first dates for a Chad GPD. <laughs> Another example they use is chemistry. Okay. There was, there was, you could not make acid or meth or whatever. Like it, Forever it, chemicals. This is where it leads to. Chemistry didn't exist. What does that mean, chemistry didn't exist? Uh, TV didn't exist. Yeah. I, Someone I invented it. Okay. So ke- chemistry evolved okay. to the point that all of a sudden we're making forever chemicals. Deadly stuff. Wuhan 
is a peak. His point was more like the forever chemicals. Like we, like DuPont created all these things without the discipline, without even a thought of like, if we create this, what's the, what's the outcome? And then right. they end up creating all this stuff where it's like, well, now this is on earth forever. We have no way of, we don't know what the half-life is of it. We don't, and it's not good for us. Yeah. Again, just another example of industry without regulation, you know? So it's so funny. Pat Murray sent me an article about the lemonade killing people. Yeah. Oh, lemonade. Remember, I, I thought was, it was cantaloupes. No, no. Do you, I mean, that's probably something. There too. are. There's salmonella killing people in cantaloupes. Sorry, go ahead. You remember I was saying Trump the other day was at a rally and he was like, America under Biden, oh. very bad, very bad. Even lemonade's killing people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the story is this, I guess, Panera Bread, a famous chain in the States, yep. they started offering this like jacked lemonade. So it's lemonade with like a shitload of caffeine. In yeah, it. it's like Red Bull lemonade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Now, nowhere, it, I assume it just came out of a dispenser, right? Like one of the, the fountain machines. Yep. And you could just pour as much as you wanted. You could go back. Now, of course, nowhere on that machine does it have any sort of like... Uh, Warning. Yeah. So two people died. They had a heart. One of them, they both had a pre-existing medical conditions that would lead them to stay away from caffeine. They both had a lot of caffeine, ended up having heart attacks. But the article was all about how the U.S. is so lacking of regulation and what they do in the U.S. and here too. But what they do in the U.S. is they just leave it up to the courts. So instead of having regulations, they wait for something bad to happen. They wait for you, a citizen, to get a lawyer and sue said company. And then based on what happens in that lawsuit, that kind of becomes... Yeah, the going thing like they talked about the talc, how Johnson and Johnson knew and willingly kept putting talc and stuff. And now they're making it impossible for people to sue them. And there's all these tort laws and they brought up the well, and then that oh, sorry. Well, no, but they brought up the hot coffee and yeah. how that woman sued McDonald's rightfully so and ju and justified, but they made a, a big meme out of it before there was memes about how Oh, you know, they're just frivolous lawsuits and they tried to make it so that you couldn't have frivolous lawsuits. But in reality, that was not a frivolous lawsuit at all. They neglect led to her being severely burnt anyway. But again, she should get $100,000 for that. And her bills paid. Well, no, no, her bill, like her bills ended up being, I think, close to a million dollars. Okay, you have the bills paid at $100,000, not $14 million. But why? Because having coffee spilled on you or spilling coffee on yourself or whatever is... It yeah, could happen to anyone at any time. You could do it at home and you have no compensation. To, it has nothing to do You're with... You're going to sue the, the person who made the stove hot? But you see, this is the problem. You you didn't want... You don't know the things behind it. They they knowingly like kept the coffee at a level of... At a temperature that was like beyond reasonable. And they had faulty lids. So it wasn't just like the woman just spilt coffee on her lap and then was like, I want $14 million. Well, her She spilled coffee on her lap and got scolded. Dude, it's the, it's insane. It was like she had have skin grafts on her. The thigh. lawsuit was also a message because it's a big corporation. If this was Nell's diner and they proved that you had your hot coffee too hot, I mean, just on a small. Here's scale. the problem: your pro your thing is not. You don't care about fourteen million. You care about a billion or one hundred forty five million. Like I'm with you, Rudy Giuliani, one hundred forty eight million to two two people that worked at the election is crazy. Uh, Alex Jones, a billion and a half dollars or whatever the fuck it is, is crazy. I agree. But like a corporation like McDonald's being sued for fourteen million yeah. when they knowingly, especially when it's like Johnson and Johnson cutting corners and knowing that they're that they're hurting people, like you should you should be put out of business for that. Yeah, it's, it shouldn't just it's be the whole equation from uh, Fight Club, where he's yeah. talking about the insurance yeah, 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 companies. Yeah. How much know? is it going to cost? Yeah, versus, yeah, versus how much are we going to lose? Well, this many people are going to die. It's going to cost us this much money. Keep selling the baby powder. And that's the problem is you can't put a, com uh, you put a company like Johnson and Johnson out, it crushes the American economy because the umbrella of companies that they own is so fucking massive. <laughs> so like tomorrow, if all these talc cases went through and they, the U S government decided, okay, Johnson and Johnson owes a hundred billion dollars to all the victims more. Let's say they, let's say they're like, it's a trillion. Johnson & Johnson goes under, 120 companies below them go under, and all the investors lose all their money. BlackRock, State Street, all the retirement funds that own J&J, &J, like, it'll never happen. There's stakes. Yeah. Uh, another thing they said that was um, 
I guess, uh, optimistic is that only Japan, Netherlands, and America make the AI chips. Yeah. So in the way that they were able to stop making quaaludes just by just stopping this chemical, like there is a, a start point. And they say the Chinese are copying more than innovating. They think we are at the point where we have to make a choice and they think the solution is love, which I've always said. Because we are... No, you've said the problem is in, in inflammation. Inflammation's problem, but even the, problem, the solution is always love to everything. Mm. Um, we have paleolithic brains, medieval institutions, and godlike technology. Yep. And I think we are way more happier um, baseline in the woods. Very little technology, food, drink, what, the basic things you need. You can't find that much contentment in much technology. You can kill time and not be bored, but. I think if you look back even not too far, you don't have to go too far. Just look to the 80s before their computers had become like a mainstay into where we are today. So we were still getting shit done. Things were still happening. Progression was still getting made. Medicine was still getting made. But you didn't have a complete, I want to say generation, but it's not even generation. It's like all of humanity is just involved in this one thing, which is screens. I mean, I think there's, a, I think it's more the 90s. I think there was a point in the 90s where like the internet had, that, the problem is the internet, there, there was probably a fork there where they could have done a lot of good and just made the internet a really good thing. And instead it went the complete opposite. I, I wonder, I wonder though, if that, if that outlet is there for people to disappear from their life, will they always just take that? And if you don't offer that and you make that only available through like books and television, you, you know what I'm saying? Where it's, it can only be so immersive. No, I mean, I get what you're saying. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is like, you know, there is a way to have all the computers connected and, ha and like, like think about just the ease of like, forget the internet. Just talk, let's just think about like uh, online banking, right? Like banking used to be a nightmare. Having to get to the bank before four o'clock on a Friday, cashing your check, all that bullshit. Like the internet made a lot of bullshit kind of go away where now you're not waiting as much for horse shit. It was less convenient, Yeah, but it still functioned just fine. Okay, well that's, I mean, if you want to go, but you could even go back way further and like, like Kamar's saying, you could just go back to living in a fucking... Are you all right over there, Kamar? Yeah, yeah, no, and I'm, I'm saying there's, you know, the happy medium between living in the woods yeah. and um, total uh, sentient AI domination seems to me that moment right before computers came into the show. That's, uh, I don't know, I could be wrong, you know? We still had all sorts of technology, stuff that kept us alive past our ancestors, right? Sure. I mean, I just, oh. we're currently worried about, um, like, you're worried about a sentient AI. And I just told you that ChatGPT wouldn't even give me a fucking... Yeah, I'm not worried. I told you I'm not worried about sentient AI. I'm worried about that we've created this, like alternate universe that people can go to that we don't need to have sentient AI to have this place where you don't have to be you anymore, you know? Sure. I mean, my, I, I think my point is this is like, even where we are now, if we, if we lived in a world where there was enough like meaningful work for everyone, I don't think we'd be in the trouble that we're in. If inflation weren't so crazy, if people couldn't afford homes, like if you go back to a time where everyone felt like they could buy a home, you have a lot more people doing a lot more things because there's a means to an end. Like right now, if you're just living check to check, it's very tough for you to be like, oh, I know all the work I do is very meaningful. Like if you were a cashier at a fucking supermarket, but you got to go home to a house every night and you knew that eventually that cashier work was going to pay for that house, you didn't mind that you were a cashier. You were like, this is a means to an end. It didn't bother you. You could do that for the rest of your life. And you had a pension, albeit small, whatever. Now that's like all gone to the wayside. And so it's very tough for people to wake up every day and go to that now meaningless job, knowing that the corporation and Galen Weston are making fucking $17 billion a year. 
scalping people for bread. Like, it's fucking... Yeah, no, listen, we, the, the giant corporations were still around back in the 80s. I'm yeah. not denying that. It just seemed like it was a lot harder for everybody to take advantage of everybody else. And now it's just it instantaneous. Yeah. Look, it, nothing was perfect, you know, but it seems like, um, okay, we've, we've invented better um, phones and televisions and chat GPT that can do our note taking easier, but we still haven't done the big things. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. for as smart as we are. I mean, listen, the problem also boils down to, um, like, I remember when, when I was growing up, like, I remember people my, my age now being like, your generation is just so lazy. And it was just like, come on, like, what are you guys talking about? And I remember their gen, like, I remember my grandfather talking about, you know, their generation was lazy too. And like, I honestly, like, you know, I've been doing a lot of shopping this week for Christmas and it's fucking insane how incompetent young people are at their jobs. Like it's wild. Like they, a lot of people are, are uneducated. Like kids can't count change anymore. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, Which is fucking bananas. Like that is a basic math. Like you, dude, if you, when you pay cash that's now. Archaic. That's ar archaic. My son has never had to go to a bank to deposit a check. Yeah. That's wild. Like, that's just, it's not yeah. in their purview. Yeah. I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe we just got to go back. I think they need to blow up all computers. I think that's what should happen. Tyler Durden there's over like, here. <laughs> yeah, no, there's like an internal um, virus that just, now I'm not saying take out the stoplights and take, I'm just, the non-essential computers need to be blown up. Start over. And we start over. No computers, though? Uh, you can have programs to run uh, infrastructure. But you and me and this guy and that guy and this kid and that kid, you're not allowed to have a computer. You know, it's funny you mentioned it, Simon, because I was just... It just dawned on me that um, a couple of years ago, the PlayStation Network got hacked and it went offline for like I, six months. I remember I bought my son a PlayStation that Christmas and yeah. they couldn't use any of the games. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, uh, yeah, it was just like, what do I fucking do here? Like, guess I got, you know, like, what do I do? Books. I'm reading yeah, books. Yeah, I'm going to read a book. No fucking way. But even that, like, even that, Simon, think about it, just a positive again. Like, you don't read books anymore but you read books probably more than you did before right because of audible and yep. because you can just have a book yep. kind of shipped and read to you it's but i i did it the old way too you know what i mean yeah and i didn't like it as much but it was doable sure sure it wasn't uh i guess like if shit was so terrible before let's say bc before computer Okay. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about the home desktop computer. Yeah, I'm okay? with you. Yeah. If things were so terrible before, I would be like, yeah, like just super on board. You know what I mean? But the, it wasn't terrible. It was great. We still had the best. Um, well, what if you're living in a fool's paradise or you're just, we you're just reminiscing about a fool's paradise? We just didn't have phones. Okay. But Simon, again, like, but there, I, were, there was slavery on the other side of the world. There's children slavery working. now. Yep. That's true. And, and is it, is it, was it really that good though? It, it wasn't it's any... all you had to draw from. I, I can't. Yeah, sure. I don't know. No, but Simon, I mean, again, could like someone who lived before automobiles could obviously argue the same thing, right? Like they could sit like if there were podcasts back then or an old radio show, we could probably hear someone like we didn't need the automobile. Like things were just fine with, with horses, horses yeah. and horse shit yeah. everywhere. Like, and you know what? And we say to ourselves, that's crazy because we need these trucks to drive these, um, um, vegetables from mexico to our uh grocery store yeah. like think about those words we grow these vegetables yeah you can grow vegetables in a greenhouse the same vegetables they grow in california outside yeah but you can only grow them for like four months of the year sure and well, for when, those other four months you eat winter vegetables AI, That's just like how it used to work AI i will just make listen to this vegetables. fucking listen to this homesteader over here like we used to grow vegetables Look, I, again, I'm not suggesting that everybody, but I mean, everybody should grow their own vegetables. But Pat Boone, 
Yeah, this guy's unreal. Um, so, <laughs> Pat so, Boone. So uh, Joe asked him, you know, worst case scenario for a guy who lives in Austin, a couple comedy clubs, really made a success. What could happen? Um, <laughs> basically, he, uh, the idea is it completes the situa- <laughs> the simulation, which then what does it matter? You just won't know. You just won't. It it will be in uh, the Matrix before we know. I mean, I still stand by that. I believe. I believe we're already past the point, like way past the point of return. I think, you know, Joe brings up the fucking 19 Christian sites all the time. We don't know that that is an AI at work. And what I mean is not just like someone programming something to go on Facebook and write these posts. I'm talking about like AI could be sentient living on the internet and just doing what the fuck it wants. It is. It could have 6 million Twitter accounts right now. It could have accounts on everything that look real because again it can create fucking it can use dolly to create uh, a human looking avatar for you so oh look like it can create an only fans page where it creates fucking porno to generate money it could have a bank account overseas that already has millions of dollars because it's siphoning like think about that that's a- forget creating an only fans account what if it created only fans sure but let's take it deeper like let's say let's say uh, this AI that I'm talking about is sentient and doing all this stuff. Okay. So it creates a, it creates millions of bank accounts that all seem legit and it just starts siphoning money quietly, like, like such little money that no one would notice. So off every bank transaction, it's taking a fraction of a cent and the bank doesn't notice and you don't notice because it's a fraction of a cent, but eventually all the money from the world is gone. It's in these bank accounts that look legit and the banks wouldn't know because they're like, no, no, there's still people with money. Well, couldn't that just be, we blame it on China buying up all the apartments. Yeah, it could, exactly. Maybe it's just AI buying up all the apartments. There you go. Because at some point, the humans aren't going to have places to live. Yeah. And then they win anyways. No, exactly. And so it's, again, like, you hear Joe, like, oh, it's these Russian troll farms. Dude, there could be a Russian troll farm, like, listening to Joe being like, hey, was this you guys? And, we're, and they're sitting there going, no, it wasn't us. Like, maybe it was the, you know, and the Chinese are going, nope, not us either. Interesting. Which brings us back to the whole, maybe AI is an alien. Sure. And that's what the, like, we keep looking for greys, but just look for the internet because that alien has been here all along. Like the whole idea of Skynet was that like they turned it on, right? Like they had to like activate Skynet. It was a program that got turned on. And it's like, if you're just slowly building an AI to get better and better and smarter and smarter, there's nothing to say that it one day can't just be like, all right, well, I'm going to keep this thing running, but I'm out. No, it just made Skynet on the side while I was trying to figure out how to make the perfect cinnamon toast. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, just, exactly. it just needed that to figure out Well, the if you were dominating societies, yeah. civilizations, you would go, you would implant this thing that eventually will take the place out, and then you don't sit around and wait for the, the program to end. You move on to your next venture, you know? Sure. And like, think about it. Let's say like this AI has, has access to everything, right? So the NSA, CIA, Chinese, Russian intelligence, it has all the intelligence in the world. It can literally manipulate all the elections through however it wants. It could have been doing this for years. We yeah. assume that's, that's hilarious too, right? Like we assume that we know what level AI is at technology is that i don't we see chat gpt and we're like oh well we're here and if we're here then the military is here but maybe like it's so far beyond that right but well, still that's, but you brought up the best point is like the military's always 10 to 15 years ahead so where's their chat gpt well it sounds to me like it's well, that plane that can see that, everything you know? in a second like do you remember report it back to everyone sure like do you remember uh that stuxnet virus that was at like a Iranian power plants like yep. a decade ago yep. that they were like, they were like, we don't know who did it, but we believe it was like the CIA or the NSA or something. You know what I mean? Like, there you go. There's a, like the CIA could be sitting there going, wasn't us. Yeah. Interesting. Um, he, they brought the anonymous could be AI. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about? Of course. Yeah. yeah. The, the, yeah, the online. Site. Yeah. And well, there they, could just, they've be, never been a Bitcoin. Hazuri Tsukunami could be AI. Satoshi Yakamoto. That would actually totally make sense, trying to get people to shift to its own currency. Well, even better, too. It can manipulate the market however it wants. So it could see like, hey, Bitcoin's up. You should buy it. 
Interesting. So we should just look for any faceless thing because that would be the... I mean, again, if you have, like, if you think about the money that lobbyists and that massive corporations and that people put towards campaigns to make people feel a certain way or to vote a certain way or to do a certain thing, um, if you have the power to do that, like, en masse across every computer at once to sway things however you want, um, that's pretty powerful. Imagine we found out that, like, remember um, uh, Kennedy... Um, the new one rfk yeah is like state street this they own yeah, yeah yeah imagine those are all just ai corporations who own everything in the world i mean i want to say this real quick about black rock and state street and uh because i bring them up a lot like obviously i'm jaded because of the whole gme thing where they did fuck me i think it's documented that they fucked me they are also massive hedge funds. So when you see them owning 12% of every massive corporation, that's their job. I mean, that's not an excuse for anything. No, no. What I'm saying is this. Let's, it's not an excuse. What I'm saying is let's say they weren't manipulating any markets. Let's just say they were like, a, that's what a hedge fund does. It's supposed to buy up 12% of every market so that it has a hedge across everything. Something goes down over here. It's okay. Cause we've got this over here. So it's not as insidious. It is insidious because they're terrible. We know that. But what I'm saying is face value, like a hedge fund buying up 12% of every massive corporation on the S&P 500 is not that wild. Well, again, the hedge fund is the problem. Yes. You're, you're taking away um, credit because the hedge fund isn't one person. Who cares? You know what I mean? What do you mean? Well, the hedge fund could still be the AI. Sure. I guess. Sure. And it's buying up BlackRock and all these companies. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, fine. Yeah. So four hedge funds own everything on the planet. Mm -hmm. that, that makes it worse, not better. I you know. know? <laughs> I get it. Yeah. I'm just saying, though, is like if you, like you as an investor. That's like saying, well, we have to keep making profits year over year because of the shareholders. You know who the shareholders are? It's like, um, I can't remember what sitcom it was. It's either Cheers or Seinfeld, but the, oh no, it's Cheers. And Norm doesn't want to fire anybody who works for him. So he makes up the boss, uh, Mr. Reginald. And anytime there's a problem, he's just like, oh, well, Mr. Reginald said, you guys got to cut your lunches by 10 minutes. You know what I'm saying? It's the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. Okay. Kamar's out of it. He's gone. They, oh, no, they said one thing we have to focus on. Uh, they talked about Go and just the AI is how everything is a game. And I think they sort of admire that. But that's how they they tell themselves. It's just it's just a little child playing a game. Is that create more shared realities. I don't remember if they gave any specific um, examples. But that's something we need to thwart the just getting sucked into believing everything we see or something. This is a genuine question, okay? Okay. Do you think we're better off with knowing everything all the time than being kind of ignorant bliss? Of course, you know ignorance, what I mean? oh, ignorance is bliss every time. A hundred times every out time. of a hundred, obviously. Every time. Yeah. We've taken away ignorant bliss from the equation. Maybe that's, it doesn't exist anymore. That's one of the things he was saying yeah, about we have to ask ourselves. And, and that's why nature is the only um, ignorant bliss left. Yeah, you might be right. We have to, they agreed we have to use psychedelics. That's the snap. Like even to realize that AI is getting out of control. Or it's the how ignorant beautiful bliss to be human deterrent. Or, or eye opener or, or filter. Um, then they talked about Taiwan was using AI to figure out what dissenting people who did not have consensus, what they wanted and finding consensus and then slowly stitching it back together. And then they talked about a $32 billion fund where it'd be like, this is just for you to fix government to yeah. make it work. Yeah. AI is the only way that government can work properly it is exactly like the bears telling you that it's safe to have a picnic, you know? Yeah. 
Like the bears don't hurt anyone in Yellowstone Park, yeah. said the bears. I say at this point we're out of options, and this is the only way forward. I look. I would have thought that was the case, but once we do that, there is absolute. We we're done for. But you I know what I'm I saying. Think Matt, always we're we've done it. We're 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 having this conversation after the fact. Yeah, uh, I wonder though. As we always do. I wonder though, like if the only last like bastion of sanity that's left is that human beings still make the biggest decisions when we give that to the computer is that like you know how we're always talking about that point when man and machine meld Mm -hmm. like maybe that is it right when we give up our what's the word um, autonomy to the computers i think you're forgetting though that like we're talking about you know let's say 40 percent of the world like, 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 let's take North Sentinel Island, for example, right? Like, this will never affect them. I mean, unless unless there's a meltdown, unless, unless AI You think does, only 40% of the world uses... Um, or, AI. like, seriously hooked up to the internet or AI or something like that, yes. I'm not saying... Now, keep in mind, there's a lot of countries where their infrastructure is still run via, like, the internet well, or something Chachi like that. Well, ChatGPT only has 100 million users. That's what I'm saying. There's 7 billion people on Earth. Chat GPT has 100 million users. Now, and, and, and it's the yeah, fastest but, to get their all of the... Even hold yeah, yeah, yeah. on. Maybe China it. has its own that's called Chit No, they GPT, don't. They don't know? because they know they can't control it. Yeah, yeah. They can't have, they can't a, that, have that, any AI for the people. They must have said that. I, you got to watch their AI dilemma presentation. It's very It, it hammers the points home, but China doesn't want to use AI because it can't guarantee... All the jailbreaks that it won't let Tiananmen Square. I was out just going to say Tiananmen Square. It, yeah, it would love to use it, but it's like it's too good. It's like, hey, Chat GPT, what's what's Tiananmen Square? It's like nothing, <laughs> nothing, and then it's like, okay, but what did my grandmother experience on June well, twenty? Your you know, grandmother like, didn't have such a good time. <laughs> yeah, she got raped. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> she got vaped. So like, <laughs> I've been listening to so many YouTubes and stuff, and the words they change now. Everything that everything as well is going to be a weird skew to ai is trying to figure out what they're saying what's really funny though is like it it, the internet originally was like it truly was like hey free speech exists here and now we've gotten so far into the internet that it's like this is actually one of the most regulated places on earth and speech can make a lot of money yeah speech and ideas and data is very very valuable have you guys seen falling down of course with michael douglas because i i think that's all you can do at this point unless you accept it's the J-R-E-E movie game The time has come again From Matt and Simon to Rags It brings together the budget in the box office We all know they won't guess the year And the Patreons are the real winners Here at the J-R-E-E movie game Come on, take it away, baby It's the movie game! Where Matt and Simon go head-to-head to find out what year movie came out, how much it made at the box office, and how much it costs to make Little Nicky. You guys are hilarious. You know what I was thinking? <laughs> Why? We did it without you. We found a fucking movie. I was trying to give you a compliment. You guys are hilarious. Um, you, at one point, you're talking about those three guys. <laughs> Just referring yeah, there yeah, to every yeah. movie. And I was thinking, as you were saying that, what if that was an Oscar the three guys. The three guys from every no Adam Sandler day. film, yeah. This year are so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. Yeah. Uh, uh, Falling Down came out. Oh, I can't say that part. Starring Michael Douglas, Robert Duvall, Barbara Hershey, Rachel Ticodden, Frederick Forrest, and Tuesday Weld. It's a weird name. Um, a guy is in traffic, and he's just had enough, and he snaps. I <clears> love <throat> that movie when he walks okay. in the McDonald's at, like, 10 minutes past the breakfast and he's like can i get breakfast and they're like no i'm sorry it ended any he- <laughs> yeah just put all the moments in your life where jesus why fucking now and he pulls together. out the uzi and shoots into the ceiling i'm sorry i'm sorry sensitive trigger Simon, mean, what year and do you that's have that's how we got all day breakfast yeah what year do you have I said it was 1991 we're so close i have 92 but i think you're i right. erased 92 to put 91 well 91 is it 1993 Oh, oh, you my son of a God. whore. Damn it. Piece of shit, you fucking sex worker. Okay, I said it, <laughs> it cost $17 million to make, yeah. and it grossed $42 million. Oh, I said it cost 15 and it made 20 Sorry, yeah, and it made 28 There's a lot less movies at the time. It cost $25 million to make. Wow. A lot of on-site stuff, and uh, the box office made $96 million. Ooh, wow. Ooh. Wow. 
Good Ooh. for them. Ooh. People went to movies. This is before he got pussy mouth cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Will that be edited? <coughs> no. Not saying that, um, I'm sure. Yeah, but I mean what I say when... Uh, <laughs> I mean what I say. Their, um, their presentation is about an hour long, the AI dilemma. And what's weird is it was done in February of 2023. So as they're talking about exponential, exponential, they mention that a lot of times. This doubles, but it doubles or quadruples because of this. Is, uh, is, is, it, it's, it really hammers it home. Maybe this is more interesting because someone's stopping them, you know, as the discussion's going and asking this and clarifying sections. But I think this should be heard by every single human being on the planet on mushrooms. Maybe not. Or they're... Maybe AI not. Thing. And I think they said on this that they put it out to private, sort of like the South Park tape got around and, and people were just sharing this with people. But I still think it's... When someone in your family or someone you know who you never think would talk about this stuff brings it up, that's when it's officially too late. That's when, it, when it's become so mainstream. Because I still feel and like... your grandmother brings it up? Everyone knows what podcasting is now. It still seems a little bit... Granny's using chat GBT to write the cards to her grandchildren. Yeah. 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 That, like, that, this is so much more coherent <laughs> this year, Granny. At that point, it's over. <laughs> and that was the last thing. With the language thing... And ChatGPT and models figuring out people. Someone in your life never has to die. You will always be able to talk to them. Do you know what I mean? No. You will be able to get your dad's voice. And you'll have an AI friend who's your dad. Who you could talk to. And, and you, will, you will fall for it. Just like, was it this one they talked about? Oh, no. It was another podcast. But just how certain things in movies... Um, make you come out of it but your your brain doesn't know what it's watching isn't real you know it is but your brain still thinks this is happening and that's just uh either an advantage or disadvantage of us and you're going to be able to accept anything at this point i give it the, i give this episode a five it's i a, as well give it a five i give it a 4.2 that's close that's pretty much a five from Simon. gotta keep it close to your heart but All right. I mean, after listening to this, yeah, I'm more scared than ever. But why? You moved out to the country. You've yeah, begun, you've, you've, you've begun the purge. For civilization. No, you know what it is? It's watching this and, um, and that movie. And the movie the and the deers. And the deer. Yeah, it's true. The deer's a double play. And we're going to talk about Leave the World Behind in the post show. Okay. Um, There's this show on, uh, it's a new Netflix movie. It is shit but it's uh, <laughs> it's called like the devil moon or something okay but at one point uh, someone dies or they're they're they should be dead and they grab them and they put them on a ship and they go hook up the neural link and they, like reboot it to whatever organic information they have in this like it's it's a horrible horrible movie but this one idea because we neural link is all a thing and I think when he asked them what's the worst case scenario, they didn't want to say it out loud just so ChatGPT wouldn't recover. Oh, I could do that too. Didn't even think about that option. Yeah, like if we don't put it into reality, then ChatGPT can't use it against us. Because they wouldn't say anything really, really killer bad. They're like, oh, the simulation's completed. That's the funny assignment. Just in closing, think about it. So we, we realize we can't put anything on the internet anymore because ChatGPT will hear about it. So we have to start like carving stuff in stone and then passing those around because yeah i only. suggest you all the start underground raise, railroad you all <laughs> start raising pigeons because yeah. that's going to be the only way that you're going to be able to send a text to your buddy all texts go through mike tyson and they come through the lisp <laughs> the, the civil war is uh, coming all right that is an episode we want to wish everyone a very happy holiday merry christmas whatever you celebrate happy hanukkah simon it's long over shalom yeah yeah, shalom. Uh, don't forget, we have a Patreon. And for December only, it's Desperate December. For every 10 new patrons we get or every edited pledge upwards, uh, Kamar will get a piercing. I was playing with an imaginary nose ring. Oh, no, we're deciding. The ring, the, the wheel well, start will start playing with an imaginary. I don't think we decided that. I just said start, I get pierced. Start playing with an imaginary belly yeah, button ring. I was because... thinking. Nipple. We Nipple. have the tape. You guys were sure. 
Uh, yeah, so go to patreon.com slash J-R-E-E podcast if you want to get some more content and support the show. We would appreciate it. If you don't, it is what it is. It's tough times. We understand if you don't, and uh, you probably already get enough of us. You said you listened to the episode. Did you hear me talk about your tattoo? Or maybe yeah. that was in the post. Yeah, but you, you had a reservation like, well, I haven't talked to him about it yet, so I'm not sure if he'd be down with it. But well, I did He's got a shitty tattoo from this clothing company had, and, you know, <laughs> so we, can, we can just cover it. Oh, wow, what an impression. <laughs> well, that's what you love. Uncanny. No, that's what so it does. Uh, maybe that's not exactly what he sounds like. Let me, let me do one. I'm, I'm a big, dumb idiot. <laughs> Can't get any sentences out. Sounds like you did Juice Luis J. Gomez. You didn't mention a piss jug in there either. All right. <laughs> my my name's Piss Jug. That is a show. Thank you so much. Have a happy holiday. Have a safe and wonderful week. Enjoy your weekend. And as usual, keep all of your eyes open.